survived this whole time. They heard me bitching about Norm fucking up. <laughs> Garage Band's recording. Whenever Perfect. you are ready. Are you hosting or am I hosting? I'm hosting. Video's right. not back up. Is, right. is everyone happy with the audio levels now? I'm, why not? Video's been back up. I don't see video, but I might need to. Oh, there it goes. Hey, let's start the show. It's Thursday, December 29th. Welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. Welcome to the show. I'm Norman Chan for Tested.com, hosting this week's podcast, the last podcast of 2011. With me, across from me, Gary Witta, who was generous enough to come into the office today on his last week off. Always happy to come into the office for the for the fans and the loyal audience. That's, I think com- right. I think coming into the office to podcast when you promise that you're going to do. I think yeah. that's the least you can do. Oh, a- absolutely. The week before, between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, when it's not like you got anything going on. No, 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 no. I mean, and you, you know, you didn't have many days off this month. Is, is this a more. subtle dig at me? Is that I, I, I don't here? think there's anything subtle about no. it. Will no, whoa, <laughs> that is, that is impressive. <laughs> and uh, to my left, uh, technically to your left, yes. I mean, he may actually be. I I, I don't know what our compass directions here. I'm kind of like Gary's way. I think here, over uh, there via telepresence like, that way via via telepresence the power of skype yeah. Yeah. video oh take off that hat no so will's, is he, will will's here in kind of like a max headroom oh, kind yeah. of mode He's i messing guess. around with augmented reality on the screen i shouldn't be driving is why i'm not here right now i i i've now been up about 18 hours and uh I, i'm very sleepy and and it was a team effort getting us from the airport to pick up the dog and back to the house uh, with only a short stop over at Wendy's. I just think so. it's kind of it's it's kind of funny how you made a big deal about how we had to do one more podcast. I kind of didn't want to break into my holiday oh, yeah. to do it. It's not like I get paid to come do no, this. I told Daniel, and I'm yet taking this week off, we've offered to pay you. We broke Thank into you our much. we broke into our yeah, holidays yeah. to do this, and yeah. got then Will, who's driving the whole effort, at the last minute says, ah, "I don't want to come in." When so we're the only minute, two here. He's the, at home in the comfort of his own home. The very you guys are minute. American heroes. An hour ago, the text message was, I, "I shouldn't be driving. Can you set up a podcast?" And, and in, you know, and in a funny way, I was surprised, and yet not. No, like, I kind of felt no. like this was always, yeah. always on the cards. This was this 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 was inevitable. Hold on, I, I want. First off, this is U.S. Air's fault. I'm the victim here. How they are you lost the victim? My bags. It took them an hour to get to the point that they could say, hey, we lost your bag. So we, the plane landed 15 minutes before it was supposed to. I'm thinking, wow, I've got three full hours to get over there. No problem. Get off the plane, walk over to the, to the luggage pickup place, watch his bags come off. The thing stops. More bags come off. The thing stops again. I walk over and they're like, is that the last bag for the Charlotte flight? And they said, yeah, that's the last bag. So, um, did you ride first so, yeah. class back here too? I, I well, I didn't pay for it, but we use. I have no U.S. Air Freak flyer have miles. No up. excuses. It's kind of scary to, to discover that you can fly first class and they will still lose your that, bags. That's true. You think first class? That's the, those are the people they would take special Almost care of. Almost as Delta. I, I, I'm special. I had the little orange thing on my bag that said, "Hey, this person is special. Don't lose his fucking bag." And you know what they did? They lost your bag. They well, here's here's a question. Bag. You know how if you do carry on, but sometimes there's not enough space on the overhead for all the carry-on, and it will check your bag-in. Is that a free check-in? That's even a free though... check-in. Yeah. Well, in first that... class, it's never a problem, because you're always on the plane first, and there's that's plenty true. of That's true, yes, yes. But that, that's a free check-in, that. when yeah. otherwise it would be a $25 check-in. So, yeah, exactly. As long as Bottom you... line, Will has back, been back yes. in the Bay Area oh, yeah. for several hours. Yep. Two. What is that uh, interference? There's, there's, there's I'm not liking that. On. That's coming from somewhere. Oh, it might be my phone. Oh, God. Oh, for fuck. Oh, God. I know, I'm such an asshole. Damn it. That hat makes you an asshole. The hat does make me an asshole, but it makes me a good-looking asshole. No, do you want to wear this original? 
I could oh. go a different. Oh man, you guys have Werthers? If you had, oh, if, you were, if only you were here, right in front of Will's If face. only you were here, oh, Will. God, that is you that's could, horrible. You could be enjoying a Werthers original. You too. monsters! I had mine earlier. I brought enough for the whole class too. I, I was looking forward to mm. building some Lego. I don't even like up. caramel, but I'm gonna enjoy it right now. It's, it's so just, good. So just a good. Despite Smith. Wow. So. <laughs> We thought that like we didn't know if we were going to do this. We thought last yeah. week's may have been the last podcast of the year, but we we put it together, and uh, here we are. Well, I know it's, it's a technically here, here you and I are exactly. I think I'm at least halfway here. You're, you're I mean, you're here technically. Can yeah. you stop with the wacky <laughs> effects and stuff? I don't, just, I don't, there's so many of them. I just keep scrolling down, and the list goes what, on and what on. Are you, what are you using to do that? I, it's the software that popped up when my webcam fired up. I have no idea. You don't even know what this is, but you got like a John thing. McEnroe I, hairstyle I, that right a, now. Do I have a headband on now? You do. I gotta say, as you move around, it's actually tracking with your head pretty, it, it's pretty well. Reality. It's well, you know, yeah. This is the technology that that six cores hyper threaded can deliver to you. This is. This is some serious uh, heavy duty oh CPU God. usage. Okay, all right. I think <laughs> I think we've seen enough. The it kitty, can, the kitty mask is. The last one, Hold hopefully. On. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow your mind. I got one more. Oh. Sunglasses. Oh, you know, from here, that actually looks like you're wearing sunglasses. Normal glasses. Pretty, pretty right. impressive. What's the, what's the, uh, the shortcut glasses. to take a screenshot? I'm gonna take screenshots of this, so we can use this as a podcast image. Oh no. Sunglasses. I think it's Command Shift. Oh, on, do the pink hair. The pink hair is the way to go. Okay. I, I don't know if people can really appreciate this on the stream, but it is. It is really a horror beyond imagination. You look like Lady Gaga or something. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I can't help, it, man. Oh I was, goodness. I was born this way. Okay, let's let's oh. let's move on. Oh. So, is there tech news this week? Did anything happen? Uh, yeah. Well, there's been a lot nope. of end of year roundup yeah. type stuff. We can talk about that. Absolutely. Do you do you have a topic list, or yeah, is this going to be any light, kind of structure to a this very podcast? Light topic list. Okay. Is there ever we'll, a structure to we'll this kinda, podcast? Well, Will, your your show notes are terrible. Well, I, I I did this on the airplane last night at one o'clock in the morning our time. So, when when Rory was bitching me about whether it was early or late, that's when I put these show notes together. Um, yeah. So, so well, there, okay. So there's a few, a couple of things happened this week, right? Uh, there's there's four G LTE phones coming out for Verizon, uh, Windows Phone phones coming out from Verizon. I saw Falcon tweeted that at me this that's morning. Only, a lot of a lot of people still complaining about that. Norm's soft uh, uh, sound sure levels. I'm the, uh, Turn up three, man. Uh, three Crank is all the way up. Now I'm now I'm hot. Oh, all you sound louder up. now. Yeah. All right. So uh, too much. Not too much news. Okay. Uh, Windows uh, phone roadmap kind of leaked out. Uh, next year, two big updates in Windows Phone Tango, which is coming out early next year for low cost phones, um, and then uh, what they say oh, competitive. Hold on. Hold on. Let's, let's stop a sec. Do they need an update for low cost phones? Because I thought that's what they had right now. No, it was just uh, the uh, uh, no. low cost phones. They're going to even low cost it more. Wow. Feature How low cost year can it get? I, I think it's a carrier thing. So there was an interesting post, um, I think, from a former Microsoft engineer, um, someone who wor had worked on Windows Phone, who was basically complaining about Android. And, of course, uh, Paul Thoreau at Win Win Super Site agreed with him, saying that uh, the, the path that Android's taking right now with its uh, openness and basically giving carriers and phone makers uh, free reign over their software and their platform uh, is the mistake that Windows Phone, Windows Mobile, made uh, yeah. in the past five years before the iPhone, and the reason that Windows Mobile kind of just died off, the users revolted. Um, and it's, it's it's a fair point, uh, and obviously he's saying that right now because Windows isn't doing that. When Microsoft is not doing that. Windows Phone Seven is a very closed system, as closed as you know, maybe not as close as Apple, but relatively compared to Android. It's, right. And we've seen a lot of benefits of that. The hardware well, it's a, it's is, is all in sync. Turn Will down just a little bit. And, and then uh, hopefully we'll have it right. Okay. All right, there it goes. Um, but and he's saying that over time, his, his prediction was that over time, uh, Windows Phone would overtake Android because the users would prefer that platform, as as has been proven mm. with the iPhone. The response is, is that, and then there are several responses. the The most common response is that no, that's not the reason uh, Windows Phone is not doing well. Uh, it's because it's way too late. And uh, developer support, it's not not there. I'd say that's a fair assessment. I mean, they they're they're two years late. I mean, that's that's the problem that they're having right now. It's it's very late because the market has definitely kind of calcified around iOS and Android. Um, and you know, again, the longer you wait, 
the more people get into the sunk cost of these ecosystems. You know, you've bought a lot of, like at this point, it's momentum. Even, even if I wanted to switch to Windows Phone 7, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, well, I got, a, I, I got a bunch of apps, you know, already that I've, that I've bought, you know, I, I've, I'm, I'm kind of shackled to this to this system now. I, I mean, I could wipe the slate clean and start over, but... And it can't just be one or two killer features unique to Windows Phone that's going to bring people over um, or even well, convince new people to, to adopt the phone. It needs to be something big. And it's, it's, the thing is, it's not even the same... Like, it's not even the app cost. It's the fact that people are in two, two to three-year contracts depending on what country and what carrier they have. And the cost isn't as it's not like the, it's not like going out and buying an Xbox where you shell out two hundred and fifty bucks. It's that you are committed to this for a long time, and people aren't sure about it, and they're not willing to drop the thing that they already have or pay extra to you know lose. lose I mean, you know, there are still plenty of people out there, I guess, that don't yet have smartphones, and there are and there every year, every two years, there are people that are you know coming out of their contracts and looking you know and, and seeing. Not everyone is fiercely loyal to Apple or oh, Android or not. Windows Phone. You know, in fact, I, I I think you know we're we're among those so i'm pretty loyal to the apple system i like the apple way of doing things a lot of people are equally uh loyal to android and 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 windows phone 7 has its devotees as well but that's i think the thin end of the market the vast majority of people don't give a shit about brand loyalty they just they're just going to go with what they like and who offers a good deal so and whoever offers a good deal correct in store people buying phones at kiosks at their mall right. at right. the verizon store they, they look at something that's well marketed you know and and, and has apps because yeah. apps are what people right. care about. If you right. listen to, you know, all the, all the ads push apps these days. And also, I think overseas, when you talk about not people, not many people having smartphones relative to, you know, people who do uh, compared to feature phones, overseas, emerging markets. And that's why I think Windows or Microsoft is pushing Tango, a low cost phone next year. Early yeah. Next year. And this is where I think Apple has been very smart, which is keeping the last generation phone around for, you know, a cheap and sometimes even free, free. free is very phone compelling. in. Yeah, you but, know, but, if I'm if I'm going to the store and I'm saying I may I may very well want the iPhone 4s, but I'm looking at 300 bucks out the door before I even you know before I even start paying my monthly contract, yep. compared to an Android or a Windows Phone 7 phone, which may not be as sexy but is free. The, va the vast majority of people are, are, are going to be swayed by that. So there, there are two things that I learned anecdotally over the holiday weekend or ho holiday week, talking to normal people out in the real world instead of San Francisco, uh, you know, echo chamber folks. Uh, one is that most people think that twenty to thirty, twenty to forty dollars a month extra for a data plan for a smartphone is way too much. Most people, um, correct. That, even, right, that, even on family plans. Even on family plans, that's the big thing that Microsoft has to overcome if they want to tap into the other ninety. Depending on how you count it, eighty to ninety-five percent of the market. Um, and that's the one thing that they cannot control with the carriers. Right. They can tell carriers you must use this hardware. You, you know. But they they can't say charge less for the data plan unless they offer something on the kin level on, on the feature phone level. You know, that, that, again, that's why early next year at CES probably cheap Windows Phone seven phones. Well, but they fucked that up too. I mean, they fucked that up with the kin. the The data plans are still the same price as as they are with iPhone or or everything but BlackBerry. That's that's has. the thing. If you really want to hit the entry level market, the people that want to have a, a smartphone experience but don't want to get shackled to a mega contract. Uh, you got to work with the carriers to come up with a with an attractive carry plan. Well, this is we saw this is what killed the kin. They had a very basic phone mm -hmm. that was very cheap, exactly. but it had a yeah. ridiculous uh, data plan, yeah. and that's and that murdered it. And it, think about what carriers want. They want people to buy into a contract. It might not be a high data plan. They want to be able to buy into a contract, and they want phones that have their apps on it, their marketplaces. And so there's room for you know kin level feature phones running Windows Phone Seven, maybe with more li limited capabilities and more carrier software for entry level market. The, the whole Windows Phone 7 thing is to me the biggest unknowable, it's the biggest intractable, intangible thing in, in tech right now. Like the next year, I think it's going to come into focus very clearly in the next 12 months. But for right now, I just, I, I really feel like you could flip a coin on this. Microsoft has obviously come in. They're, they're, they've finally made a very smart decision with partnering up with, with Nokia. They've got their, their flagship hardware partner. Uh, you know, the, the, the phones are, even though the phones are technically out, the real push is going to happen this year. And, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. But honestly, I, I think you'd be foolish to try and predict what's going to, Windows Phone 7 could be anything from, you know, it could really come in and kick ass or it could completely drop like a stone or anywhere in between. And I, I, I wouldn't yeah. even try to make a prediction on this. Well, so so I, I think based on the leak roadmaps and based on the news leak today, I think first half of 2012 
will be a push from Microsoft for low end from Windows Phone 7. And then if they're they on their on their roadmap, they do have something they call competitive with super phones. Um, for the end of the year, they need to get that out before the next iPhone comes out and really have a, a huge feature, LTE, basically, on well, those phones. It, here's the other thing I learned, and this is an Android lesson, but the people I know who bought the first wave of Android phones, the Droid and the HTC Incredible, the first Incredible, are, um, and again, anec- this is all anecdotes, but uh, of the probably half dozen or so people I talked to, the ones who liked those phones are the ones that are running Cyanogen and, and that kind of stuff on them, not the ones that are running Sense and not the ones that are, well, the Droid one was a stock phone, but um, but not not the ones that are running custom UIs. So I am not entirely certain that those people are going to come back to Android because most of them haven't spent much money uh, in the App Store, so there isn't that much holding them onto that platform at this point, other than the fact that it's the thing that they're comfortable with and they're familiar with it. Right. I think that's where Microsoft's opportunity is. I, I don't see a whole lot of people leaving leaving Apple. Um, I do see a fair number of people leaving Android. I think we'll begin to get a sense of this uh, in a couple of weeks at CES when you know we start to see what the real offerings are. I think Microsoft obviously is going to make a big push. No. Windows Phone Seven make, probably yeah. make some announcements and reveal some some handsets and some other stuff at CES, and we'll start to be able to to, to gauge this a little bit more. But right now, it's just just impossible to know. Everything except Apple. All all the mobile phone news stuff comes. Typically, first half of the year, you have CES, CTIA, and then Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. So that's those are the three anchor points for product. Yeah, and the, and, the, and the market is, the, the, the field is kind of wide open for Windows Phone 7 to come in and do something right now. Because even though we talked about the calcification between iOS and Android, if you just look at what's happening right now, there's there's not necessarily anything huge going to happen in the next six months in the competitor side. Like So the iPhone 4S is still relatively new. We're not going to see an iPhone 5 probably until at least the summer. Mm-hmm. At the very earliest, uh, uh, people are saying fall right, right now. Complete right. redesign, right? Likely LTE. Uh, I, you know, the 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 the, the, the Again, flagship the flagship Android phone with ice cream sandwich that just came out. So I don't know if we're going to see anything that's going to beat that anytime soon. So Windows Phone Seven at least has an opportunity to come in and like have a nice open space to kind of make its make its imprint. It's not like they're going to make a big deal and then Apple comes in next week and like blows them away with their announcement. That's you know? pretty much all we can say about that. It's uh, like Gary said. Windows Phone 7, it's it's very unpredictable. No one can forecast, you know, whether it's going to succeed or not. But the one thing we did forecast for this year was that the Kindle Fire was going to sell like hotcakes. And we were right. And, well, well, right to a certain extent. So Amazon actually announced today that this month for the holiday season, meaning for the month of December, mm-hmm. uh, they sold 4 million Kindles. Okay. And that is that- split between the Fire, the Touch, the 4G, DX, yeah. You know, 3G with keyboard. Oh, the whole Kindle family. Kindle okay. family, not and they just didn't, the Kindle they didn't, So they didn't break they it down. They never ah, break it down. Okay. Because uh, we say, know they would have shifted a lot of those $79 units. Uh, that was absolutely. probably a very yeah, hot it, gift over yeah. the holidays. Uh, so obviously, uh, with the Kindle Fire, they probably made more money or quantity uh, in, in terms of gross because it's more expensive, more than twice as expensive as the, the Touch. Uh, they did say most of the Kindles sold were fires. Or okay. The, the most sold were, were fires, not right. more than that's, 50%. That's, Fascinating. More fires than touches and then Kindle 4Gs. Yeah. yeah, and again, just purely anecdotally, I'm looking at my Facebook over the holidays, and a lot of people were getting Kindles of every variety, but the fire was definitely very well represented yeah. in there. So, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the fire was a super hot seller and maybe sold, let's say, 2 million. 50%. Yeah. That's pretty generous. And it doesn't surprise me at all because even with some of the bad press, it didn't get great reviews. You know, mm-hmm. once you got hands on with it, it wasn't, you know, the be all and end all yeah. like we hoped it would be. Um, I don't think people were returning them uh, in droves either. Well, and that's the thing. Well, it remains to be seen if people are going to stick with it once they really get used to the experience and see, you know, some of the rough around the edges stuff. But the point is that, again, the vast majority of people are not us. The vast majority of people are seeing it on the front page of of Amazon going, wow, one ninety nine. it's a color Kindle that plays games and what plays movies and all my books are on it. Like that's again, to the to the to the novice, to the layman. It's a very, very attractive uh, proposition. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that even with the story kind of turning against it a little bit in the tech press in the last few weeks, that didn't stem the tide no. of the, them selling. And I think that's, that was way overblown. People saying that they were going to return their Kindle fires because I don't think it's going to happen. And I again, think- even I am someone who considers myself like kind of a little bit kind of amateur technorati. Like I'm fairly yeah. up on tech. Even I was looking at it going, you know what? This isn't that bad. I think, I think you guys were a little harsh on maybe, it. It wasn't brilliant. Maybe people use it less than we anticipated or yeah. they, they wanted to. Straight yeah. to but, the drawer, baby. But yeah, but not that they're not going to throw it away or you know, re-gift it. Uh, but again, if Amazon sold 2 million Kindles Fires in December, is that more than the iPad? 
Now, we made the claim that Kindle Fire we'll at March. $200. We'll know in March when Apple uh, announces their, because they do get their numbers, and they do yeah. give you very specific quarterly results. Right. Um, based on annual year-to-year forecast, so last year when the iPad 1 came out, they sold, I think, seven. 7.33 million. It was half of the yeah, half of the 14 million run of the first yeah. iPad. Six, 7.33 million iPad ones last uh, uh, end of last year, over three months. Last quarter, this summer, they sold 9.7 million iPads over yeah, three months. It, it's not a fair comparison. It's a second generation product. It, no, no, it's no a absolutely, more mature absolutely. Product. way more mature. But it's also more than twice as yeah, expensive. exactly. I mean, it's a premium product in, in the way that the Kindle and, and Fire analysts, is not. Some analysts are crazy this year saying that Apple is on track to sell 20 million iPads for this holiday quarter. I think that's crazy. But again, I think well, analysts, tracks- analysts have been overcompensating because they've been under uh, predicting the sales for the past eight quarters. Yeah. I think 20 million iPads in one quarter is ridiculous. That's twice as many for this holiday as the, over the summer. So the prediction I made that that Kindle Fire would outsell iPad 2 by volume over the holidays. We, we may never ever be able to re- verify that if they don't really release a detailed uh, breakdown of the SKUs. Well, I, hold on. If, we can't if, verify it, but we can make a very good guess that it didn't actually outsell the iPad. Right. It we probably, could it, verify yeah, it. Yeah. We there can't are, because... We verify it. We can't because Apple doesn't split up their sales by month. Well, but if Apple says we sold, you know... That's why I said we can make a very good guess. You know, statistically, it's very likely that if Apple sold, let's say, 15 million iPads this quarter, split between, let's say, conservatively split between three months, 5 million in December, although they would have sold more in December, 5 million iPads sold in December is still more than every single Kindle across yes. all models yes. sold is by that Amazon. make it egg time? That... It could be. It might. It might be. Yeah. It might be. That's just the power of Apple's brand awareness. That that is pretty amazing because the Kindle Fire is by far. Yeah. The the biggest most serious threat to the iPad that has that has come along yet. The interesting thing about this whole deal is that Amazon saying that they sold more Fires than they sold seventy nine dollar three four uh, 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 G Kindles fourth generation Kindles, which to me says that maybe Steve Jobs was actually right when he said nobody reads anymore. No. 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 I think. What's more likely the case is that people aren't upgrading their Kindles every year like we do, and people with the Kindle 3G was are that's true. very very happy with it. Either like the keyboard or just we're happy with the weight. And there's so you no think that's a mature, tired market? Have, uh, not it, we're sell. talking about four four generations and eight SKUs of Kindles. See, I, I thought that seventy nine dollars would push that into a perfect gift territory where. Um, you know, where, 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 where you can give it away to, to your grandmother or your mom or whoever uh, when you might not normally give them a $200. Yeah, the Kindle is a great hand-me-down. You know, you get the latest one and you mm-hmm. know, you give, give the old one to a friend or something. No. That's true. That, that, the same is true of iPads, though. I, my iPad 1 got, got, ha- yeah, got handed iPad, down yeah. and I handed it down to... No, wait. So my, my girlfriend hand, gave it to her brother. Okay. And uh, I had one that I kind of that I sold real cheap to a, a friend of mine. Like, they, they, they proliferate. You know, the used market for these is pretty robust as well. Yep. What about Huey, Gary? Huey doesn't need an iPad. Oh, dogs love iPads. Yes, they do. And so do iguanas and frogs and all kinds of creatures, oh, apparently. I watched that video. That frog video is hilarious. That I felt bad for the frog. Well, no, it, well, no I felt no, bad felt... for the iguana. The frog fought back, which the, I it's, support. It's at the very yeah. end. The frog bites yeah. the guy's hand. Yes, because the frog's pissed off. It's terrifying. Yeah. I would not want to get my finger bit by a frog. No, neither they're, would I. They're fast little motherfuckers. Yeah, I don't like that, them. That was the frog equivalent of Charlie bit my finger. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Kind of. So, um, Will, what did you get for Christmas? Very good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I, I, you know, I got old guy presents. Did you get that hat? Because you seem very, very pleased <laughs> with it. Will's had well, the hat for a while. Our heat's not been on for 10 days, so it's about 40 degrees. In oh, here. that's the reason? The okay. Jacket oh, on. All right. Well, I mean, as somebody who doesn't have as much hair as perhaps you used to, you, you realize the importance of a, of a good yeah, hat. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if my hat days aren't, aren't too far you know, off either. I'm going to give away my million dollar iPad app idea okay. on the is, podcast. Is it the okay. eye toilet? No, it, but it's equivalent. It's basically... And it's relevant to your uh, this topic of your, your hair loss. Uh, it's the camera app. Oh, that's just a fantastic idea, and it's such a right. simple piece of code as well. Yeah, exactly. It's a camera app okay. that records video, but has a five to t- or ten second delay on the video, okay. so you can put the camera in the back of your head or all over, oh. and show yourself it. And because of the delay, yeah. you can see 
But is that really that much different than just recording a, a, a bit of video but and then playing no it back? Wants, no one wants to record that video. No, yeah. dude, you could you also just, just see do, it in real time. do the old mirror thing right here. No, right? no. The, no, no, talk, talk no, 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 like that. No, oh, see, yeah, microphone. No, it's a good idea. Such a simple concept. Eyeballed. There you go. That's what I would call Check it. Check the bald spot. Yeah. Five seconds delay. I never. I hate it when when I get go and get my hair cut and they show me around the back because I do. I am definitely going bald from the back. Right, and they show you the and mirror. I, and I hate and, it. And every time they put the mirror back there, it's like you're crossing your fingers. Oh, don't let me see a spot. Let me, oh, what me are you talking spot. about, Chan? You got Donald Trump hair. <laughs> right yeah, there. you've got very rich. Full. You you've got it's, nothing it's, to worry it's, about it's for product. a good couple of decades. Thank I you. had a head of hair like him when I was his age. Yeah, no, so don't did say I. That's terrifying. So did I. And now it all moves south. I was always yeah. very pleased with myself, right. like, you know, genetically, yeah. um, you know, you go back and you look through your lineage and I, I was all settled. There was no baldness or anything mm-hmm. on, the, on that side of the family. Like, I'm all good. Yep. Uh, but it's it's definitely creeping in. It could be worse. What do you think is worse? Going bald from the crown or from the pate here the, where it starts I hit the back pate. front? The kind front. of Hugo oh, yeah. weaving style. No, oh, that's terrible. No, no. <laughs> you, you don't, yeah, no. The receding front is the worst. Well, no, no, no. The, the worst is the, top. the, the, worst spray is paint the, the front that. tuft. You oh, don't that's, want that spray off. stuff. <laughs> Nobody wants to go there. I, I keep hoping that by the time I get really old and all the real yeah. ailments start hitting me, the medicine will be there. That's the first thing. That, that's one thing that you probably jump on. Like clinical trials with Zan on the standing. Like you jump on FDA approved or not, you, you try the hair product. I mean, right. You have nothing to lose except more hair. Right. I read um, in Scientific American on the plane on the way back today, I read a couple of really interesting articles about aging. Um, one was about uh, well, one was about the the low calorie, you know, the starve yourself and live an extra twenty years thing that that uh, that uh, Ray Kurzweil be- uh, believes in, uh, which that is kind of interesting. Fighting a losing cool. battle, he, hmm? th- those fifty pills he takes a day is not going to help him get to the singularity. Well, the, the other side of it though was the was the thing that they found on Easter Island, and I wish I brought the magazine in here with me so I could just find the, the name. Um, what? <laughs> What do they find on Easter Island? They found a bacteria in the soil in 1964 before they put an earth uh, before they put the uh, the air pl- airstrip in there that that actually prolongs life in a bunch of things by suppressing the immune system. It was really it's a really fascinating article. I'll, I'll, I'll tweet it. Suppressing the, the immune article. system, huh? Um, but it had to do with uh, and and then there was another article about the guy who invented who disco- discovered dendrite dendritic. Uh, 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 what are they called? Dendrite cells in the immune system, uh, and he, he actually got pancreatic cancer, and then went through all these crazy uh, treatments. And instead of living the typical less than a year that you live when you get pancreatic cancer, lived three and a half years uh, and died then two days before he got the Nobel Prize. Wow! Um, so it was a little bit of a downer at the end, but uh, but 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 it was a it was a really good Scientific American this month. It's January issue. You should pick it up. So what did you get? For the Christmas, uh, let's see. I got a Shetland, uh, a, a, an actual Shetland sweater with arm patches, and um, I liked the look of that sweater. I, I'm really excited about it. I, had, I think it's in the suitcase that they lost, so I'm going to be really pissed if it, uh, if if US Air fucks it me. It looked like good. That. It looked good and chunky. Yeah, uh, you, I, you could you could pull off a, a sweater with arm patch, arm elbow patches. It, in fairness, it's probably a sweater I wouldn't wear often outside of the house. It seems like a. You know, get a briar, a briar pipe, and sit by the fireplace. It is a bit of a granddad sweater, but hey, well, again, we're we're approaching the age where that that is appropriate. Of course, of course. Um, let's see. I got some socks. I got more. See, I never get electronics for Christmas. Do you guys get electronics? Do no, because there's I no point. I actively request no electronics, yeah. please. Yeah, Leah yeah. knows not to buy me electronics yeah. or video games. It's because... very disappointing, right? Yeah, like you, if if they know you're. Uh... You know, you're a camera fanatic, right? And they get, oh, this guy likes to take photos. I'm going to get him a DSLR. Right. They're not going to spend $2,000 on a DSLR. You get the $600 Right, T2 which is not I really model. what you right. want. No, yeah. but you cannot use it yeah. because it's a gift. Yeah. And you're stuck with something you don't really want. It's tough. Exactly. And I don't know if it's partly that reason, but also just as we're getting older. I think I can't remember if it was Will that made this comment on his Facebook when he posted the picture of those socks and stuff. But it's, I, it certainly occurred to me one way or another that as you get older – all those gifts that you think of stereotypically as lame, like a yeah. sweater or socks, you're actually that's, genuinely oh, glad to receive them. That's the best, yeah. I, I even credited Norm. Yeah, I said that. I would oh, I want to set up okay. a website where I could trade with yeah. kids presents. He right. wants to so, meet small children. Yes. I, 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 on the yes. playground. I see no floor in this plan. <laughs> give me <your> presents. <laughs> give me hey, your, little boy, do you want a me, present? Give me your holiday presents. I will give you a gift. Or just get yourself a nice van. 
Yes. And just drive around to different kids' playgrounds. A big bow And ask it. if the kids want to come in the back of your van the, the to see your toys and various <laughs> things that you have to offer. I got, giz- I got gizmos here. Yeah. Handy. Um, no, it's great. I, 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 I perfectly... I don't know if it, what it's saying about me or whatever. Like, if someone gives me a nice pack of, like, really good quality socks, you know, again, 20, 15, 10 years ago, I would have been like, oh, really? Socks? But now I'm like, yay, socks! Yeah, because you would never spend that money on those kind of socks yourself. Oh, I would, I, I would, but the thing is, it's like, not like, oh, I already have this camera, I already have this video right. game. You're, n- you, you're never going to say, I already have some socks. Yeah. Like, more socks is never a bad thing. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you, I went and bought socks for everybody on the list. I bought smart wool socks for everybody, different weights, hunting weight, hiking weight, trekking weight, all sorts of socks. Uh, I bought a bunch of socks for myself. I, I, after giving myself these socks, I purged the socks that I took with me to Tennessee and just threw them straight in the trash can in the compactor and, uh, and, and only brought home new socks. So yeah. I, I am, I only have new socks. It's I, actually I great to throw socks. away all your ratty old socks and, and refill yeah. your sock drawer with like good quality new socks. And again, you know, people always talk about getting old socks and it does in many, many ways, but you have to try and look at that. There are ways that getting older is, is good. And one of them is things like it's okay to get socks. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so so let's see. I also uh, people give me T-shirts. Gina got me a, a T-shirt, which I'm sure you all all see in the future. I don't want to spoil the surprise. All right. Um, I have my my cock T-shirt, which I I got a while ago, but you know it's uh it's still relevant after all these years. It has a chicken on it. Um, what else? What else do I get? Um, I think that's pretty much. What did it. you What did you get for Gina? Uh, let's see. I got uh, well. Traditionally, I I get Gina pajamas. That's a you know we that's a, one of that's the easy gift. Okay. Um, and then I, uh, let's see, I got her some other stuff too that I can't remember what it was right now. Uh-oh. Oh, I got her, uh, the Dominion expansion. Oh, mm. cool. That's and, kind of a gift for both of you yeah. though, isn't it? Oh, uh, that, that is, a, that is an us gift. I got her power grid, which she'd wanted the, the, the new version of that. Um, and something else that I, I, damn, I must've been, so, it's so thoughtful. I can't remember what it was. Um, mm. yeah, <laughs> it was so thoughtful. <laughs> Yeah, I remember what it was. Really stumped me there. Right, well, if, if, if it if it comes back to you, we'll go to Norm, and if you if it All comes right. back to you, you can jump in. What did you? She's get, probably Norm? in the other room. Norm, what did you TV. get, and what did you give? I got socks and cash, and I'm perfectly oh. okay with that. Okay. Cash is the gift that keeps giving. I mean, it's never bad to get cash, but I'm I, I think it's still a bit of a it's it's there's not no, a lot I, of thought I, that no, goes no, into no. cash. My parents gave me cash, and some of my relatives gave me cash because they know I'm always disappointed by their other gifts. And I combined it, and I bought six picture frames that cost two hundred dollars. And, nice. And I frame shit up, and I'm very. How do they? That. When you get the cash, is it like in it's a in card red, or something? Red envelope. Okay. It's Asian style. Oh, that's how Asians yeah. do it in red envelopes. Is that why that really? site, okay. red envelope is is red envelope the gifts? Well, because gift red envelopes are what uh, for uh, Lunar New Year, which is in February. So Christmas is tough because the the real gift giving comes in February with the the turning of the Chinese New Year. Right. And we get tons of gifts and candy and red envelopes with filled with the cash. Then right, it's very close what to Christmas. Right. I, I, so, I is there a card or something nice in the envelope, or is it just an envelope like with it's, cash it's, in it? It's a fancy red envelope with like. Are there special kind of envelopes you can go and get, yes. like in Asian you get them, gift you stores get, and stuff that are for this purpose? Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, I'm learning all about multicultural. You can get it from script. banks. Yeah. Banks love giving them out because you get the money from the bank, right? Oh, right. and and usually, so uh, there's it's a very prestigious. You get, like, so like, all the banks big. around like San Francisco here oh, with yeah. a lot of Asian Tons. communities, like they they'll have Try those. Try walking around in February with loon your ear. They'll two things. They'll have the red envelopes. Okay, and they'll have trinkets shaped like whatever the animal, the yeah. zodiac animal. Is. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure what it is this year. It's like sheep or something um but you'll get like a rabbit right you'll get like two golden rabbits if you deposit x number of bucks in the bank right right but the red envelopes you can get the ones that are really big because then you can specifically ask for cash when the banks are unfolded like the new cash oh, they yeah. have, like, the nice crisp so- bills oh yeah. oh yeah you don't want just like a sweaty no. wad of no 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 of it's money all yeah crisp like crisp yeah it's gonna be brand new minted and money. then my relatives write a little note in the back and that's, that's nice. nice okay so-, so that's a nice way to do it all right so do you give it during this period as well, or is there like a, a cutoff? I don't give. Like when I don't you get give, married, you have to start giving. Oh, yeah, for uh, for Lunar New Year, uh, you give if you uh, have children. Oh, and so as long as you don't breed, if yeah, it's, it's if you receive time. if you have no children. Okay, so now yes. for Christmas, what do you what 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 did you give out? Oh, I, I don't give to my uh, families too much. I just go out take them out to dinners. Okay, uh, so I did took them out to dinner, uh, my family out to dinner, and then for friends, I got some books. All right, but, yeah. I the thing is I have such poor impulse control in terms of buying stuff. Yeah, really do that. I 
like I, I see on Twitter, oh, people got this and people got that. I'm like, oh shit, I bought all that stuff for myself. Yeah. Really. And it's, it's very sad actually. It's, it's like the most depressing time of the year. Yeah. It's like, I have the stuff. I, sh- I should feel great about it, but it would, it would have been so much better if someone gave that to me. The cash well, thing, like, you've kind of taught me around. Like, it's how, I've always thought that like, giving cash is, and, or, and gift cards by extension is a, bit, is a bit lame. Like gift cards are just a way to kind of make the gift seem more thoughtful. Like there's a, yeah. here's a, here's a specific reason for you to go right. spend the cash. Yeah. Um, but now that you, the whole red envelope thing and nice crisply well, minted bills, like that actually sounds like fairly decent. Gift certificates are fine no. to a certain place. If it's a, no. place like, like I don't a spa like thing, right? Spa, spa, spa and restaurants. Yeah, so spa and restaurants. That's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. If I was going to give a gift it's card, a it would be one of those Visa type ones. It's basically as good as cash. Right. But like in terms of gifts, a spa or a restaurant, you're you're bringing that, you're inviting that person to a different lifestyle. That's well, that's right. the thing. So the thing about the gift cards is it's a way to give cash, but with you know that's got some kind of thought and purpose right. behind it. But of course, the whole reason why those cards exist yeah. is stores and and restaurants and stuff love selling you those cards because a lot of the times they don't get redeemed, and for them it's just free. free oh yeah, money. absolutely. Yeah, you spend you know you get a twenty dollar gift card, but you spend sixteen bucks or eighteen. Bucks. Every year the statistic comes out for like how much, how many gift cards, what mm-hmm. what the dollar value was of gift cards that were never redeemed, and it's in yeah. the millions. Well, that's why in California it's illegal uh, for the gift they, cards to expire. Right. Yeah. Right. You go know, gift card hunting. Yeah. Hey, I remember the other thing I got, Gina. It's real fun. Go on. Uh, every year we get something that's combined between us for each, you know, like a, a team gift. So we're either going to get new bedding or a dishwasher. Ooh, you should get a dishwasher. Well, we already have a dishwasher. It's just a shit washer. So. You, should, you should get a new dishwasher. Don't get new yeah. bedding. Dishwasher. I'm going to go get some more. fancy German dishwasher, maybe. Wow. A Bosch. Yeah. Oh, and then for my brothers, I, 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 they, I can hand down hardware and electronics. So... I helped my little brother build a new computer, which he'll use to play StarCraft and stream StarCraft games live. Okay. Okay. And then my uh, twin brother gave an MP3 player, a Zune HD. So you gave him your old Zune HD? Yep. He loves it. Wow. All right. Yeah. Gary, Gary, you had a pretty good haul. We saw you we live saved, tweet everything. Save you. I like. Well, Relax. I didn't do everything because I got so excited by my presence. In the end, I, I stopped doing it. I tweeted a few. Um, Christmas... I love Christmas. I'm a big kid. And Leah and I always buy each other a lot of presents. It's tough on my end because Leah's birthday is only two weeks before Christmas. So I have to like have all the ideas at once for like two sets of of gifts. Have you ever tried combining, not combining, but like having a one gift match, like half the gift comes you know, no, she would not stand gifts. for that. She's always been very strict about the idea that just because my birthday and Christmas no, 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 are quite close no, together, no, not, you can't in any way combine them. They have maybe to be two separate clear. things. I have maybe that not same like, problem. Not, not like, uh, right like two before. awesome right. gifts that are connected, like that when combined are better. No, no, no. No, 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 no you're, you're, still, you're okay. still connecting it in a way oh, that I think would be frowned upon. They need to be split. Let me say, okay, so what did I get first? I got some good stuff. I got a... I got the 30 Rock soundtrack album that I've wanted for a long time that comes in a really nice collector's thing. Is with it like, vinyl? Uh, it no, but vinyl. you think you think it is when you first see it because it's like it's a vinyl shape, but it's oh. a collector's book with the like, behind-the-scenes stuff, and it's got the CD in it. And they, have, they really have a lot, that much music? Yeah, it's tremendous music. Oh, okay. Um, I, I, I'm a big fan of 30 Rock, and I think the music is one of the is one of the better components of the show, so I was happy to get that. It's been on my wish list for a while. Um, I so got, you, hold on, go on. You use the Amazon wish list for this, right? Yeah. Well, not for every, not for everything, but you know, it it does help. And you know, I've got I've got a a, a extension on my browser now that allows you to add stuff to your Amazon wish list from anywhere, which is very nice. You can see something on Etsy, you know, Mm -hmm. or any really anywhere, ThinkGeek, whatever, and you can add it to your wish list. It will show up in one on your Amazon list. That's awesome. So that's pretty cool. Um, So let me think. I got the I got the thirty rock. I got a great leg. I got the Lego set that I've been wanting for a long time. The Lego Architecture Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. Oh, um, in Mill Run, Pennsylvania, which is a beautiful building in real yeah, life. Yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Frank Lloyd Wright. I think his 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 architecture is is fantastic, mm-hmm. and Lego um, has an has a, a started a, a brilliant range of of Lego recently called Lego Architecture, yeah. where they recreate uh, beautiful buildings and 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 the structures from all over the world. So I built a Lego White House recently. Uh, the Brandenburg Gate, the uh, the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, uh, the Burj Dubai, tallest building in the world, which recently saw a Mission Impossible. Um, and so Frank you Lloyd... built the Guggenheim. That's also Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, no, that's not right. Um, uh, that was someone uh, else. Uh, Guggenheim um, is... Uh, what's his name? So Falling Water is Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, it's one of his more famous buildings. Uh, the Roby House 
uh, which is a beautiful. I think that's I think that's actually the biggest set in the architecture, like Lego Architecture Range. Uh, th- uh, uh, Rockefeller Center in New York is is one. Uh, the Space Needle in Seattle. So it's a whole range. And the space like things like the Space Needle in Burj Dubai are just like a few pieces and very very simple yeah. to build. Uh, all the way up to uh, things like falling water if someone's looking to get into get into this i would recommend go get the white house because obviously that's an iconic building and in terms of it's not so few pieces that it's boring to build but it's not so many pieces that it's it's a challenge and they all look it's it's it's, it's right in the it's it's right in the middle within Porridge that line right. there's a certain look it's like no, no like multicolored pieces it's all like ivory well some of the some of them are ivory the white house is mostly white right. and black as yeah. you would expect um, uh, falling water is it has the color. Roby House oh, okay. is all the correct colors. Okay. Um, some of them are, you know, the Seattle Space Needle is just gray. That's the best part of going to downtown Disney, the Lego store. And, and the Lego it. store is there's a, there's yeah. there's there's a great one here at the Hillsdale Mall in San Mateo yeah. as well. But the Lego store in downtown Disney is is fantastic. Yeah. They've got some great stuff. Um, I got Leah some Lego in return. We love to we love Legos. Uh, I should uh, say Lego. The plural Lego, Lego is Lego. Yeah. I don't like saying Legos. Um, but, Can I ask uh, a dumb question? What? Uh, so, I mean, when you do these kids, because back when I was a wee lad and, and I used to play with Lego, then, I mean, basically, it, we just got a bunch of random blocks and you kind of used your imagination to build whatever you want. It wasn't yeah, that's how I used to kid. play with yeah. Lego. Yeah, so well, there's, are there's these... two ways to do it. You can either get a bunch of random bricks. I okay. used, to, used to have them in a bucket and I had like a big Lego sheet yeah. that I could make anything on. And it's fun to create your own stuff. Um, but it's also fun to build the ones according to plan and build, you know, they're, they're very intricate. It's like ba- basically building Ikea furniture. Yeah. So I was going to say, with many do you have a plan pieces. for this or is it like a giant 3D there's, puzzle? There's a whole, I mean, when you get the big, big sets, I mean, we've got a Lego Death Star at home that we haven't even started yet because it's thousands of pieces. And when you open up the box, I mean, you basically build them in stages. You know, the, bo- the, the pieces come in different bags. Like this is stage one, this is stage two. And the instruction manual that takes you step by step through building it is like, you know, a mini mm-hmm. phone book. I mean, it's really, really thick. I mean, it's a, like a ring binder, um, you know, instruction book. And it's extremely complicated and it can take weeks to build something of that size. Yeah. I've got my eye on that Super Star Destroyer, which is mm-hmm. unbelievable. That's something you want to... But again, you, that's, you, you can't build these things in one sitting. You've got to set aside the space and it's a few hours a night for... Like when we, were, when we went to the Lego store and bought the Death Star, I said to the guy, how long is it going to take to build this? And he said, well, you know, if you do it a few hours a night, you could probably get it done in like a month. And I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. Jesus. So, the so okay, so, but you use yeah. a plan. It's not like you're just treating this like a giant puzzle or anything I mean, like I that. think if, I mean, trying to build trying to build a Lego model like this that's that's obviously meant to be a specific thing without the instruction book yeah. would be like trying to do a 5,000-piece jigsaw without the picture on the box. Yeah. You, you, oh, we you, should try that. That sounds like it'd be fun. I think no. you should try that. You, you do, yeah, there's no way. You, need, you have you to have, know how the pieces come together. Pictures, you, there's, yeah. And Lego's kind of come back around because I think uh, in the past decade, they, they went crazy with the new type of Lego. They went made spe- very specific pieces right. to create yeah. a yeah, yeah unique, look, unique pieces because right. it's right. the only way to do it. But now I think they're going back to you know cool things you can make, bigger things with more traditional Lego pieces, and I, I appreciate that. Oh, so, I have a question um, for you, Gary. Also, yeah. uh, tied to Lego. When you were a kid, did you play with Meccano? No, I had um, Meccano was was very popular. Yeah. It was a little um, advanced for me. It kind of so Meccano is kind of like the same as like Erector sets, I guess, yes. in the US. It's kind of more metallic, and you could build bridges and engineering things yeah. and cranes and stuff. I was more of a Lego person. Lego Lego had a range called Lego Technics as yes. well, where oh, they had electrical motors, and you could make you know cars and things yeah. that would actually and drive around and stuff. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I just liked making things out of Lego. I think Legos are an incredible tool for helping build kids' imaginations. Yeah. Um, so let me see. Lego, uh, Leah got a fire station, which is a really cool fire station, oh, yeah, on that, and a pet huh? shop. She's, oh, she's oh, built, cool. There's a whole street of, of buildings that all connect together that she's doing one at a time. That's awesome. So we're doing. Uh, we're going to do those. You should go. You, have, you've been to uh, Maker Faire, right? No, yeah. I haven't. Leah has. Oh, you should Next go to Maker Faire. Next year, Maker Faire because there's a section where they have a it's massive Lego architecture. Like, people bring their pieces and connect them to make a city out of Lego. Oh, that's cool. Um, check that out. And also, for people listening, I would also recommend, if you like Lego and, and Meccano and toys, uh, James May from Top Gear has a – he did a little series called James May's Toys um, where he, he talked about the famous toys of Britain. Right. Yeah, I mean, there are some great ones. I got um, something else Leah got for me for, me for Christmas was a, a pack of what's called, I don't think they ever had it here. It's called Fuzzy Felt. But when I was a kid, I loved it. It's basically kind of like Lego, but two-dimensional. And you got these felt pieces. 
um, that you that you could attach to like a like a felt background, and you could look, there was a farm, there was like Did a you zoo. Cut them out? They're, they're they're already kind of like cut out, and you oh, just okay. pop out of a sheet, and then you can kind of place them and make little characters. So that was kind of like a little throwback to me being a, a kid. I was happy to get that. I got a I got a wonderful sweater that is very very similar to the one that Jeff Lebowski wears in the Big oh. Lebowski. It kind of, you kind of it's very kind of seventies Swedish. Kind of like you expect to see like wearing it in like an older ABBA video or something. Right. Is I that love one it. you saw? Uh, in, in that yes. Okay. So that yeah, one yeah, 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 that yeah, yeah. I that I tried oh, on. Yeah. See, okay. see what Leah does that I don't do is that she sees me say something on Twitter like, tweet, "Oh, like, I would oh, like that." Yeah. She makes a note, remembers it, and goes oh, gets it. Even wow. if it's like in March, she'll go get it and store <laughs> it and have it for me for my birthday that's or Christmas thoughtful. or whatever. I know in a way that I just simply am not. And you just got a dead rat for. <laughs> well, that's the st- that's the stuff that she likes, though. Okay. She like um, she's really into kind of dead animals and um, taxidermy, taxidermy and skeletons and medical uh, anat like old medical anatomy things, and she loves all that kind of stuff. So, uh, cool. I got her I got her a rat skeleton that she was very pleased about. Did, did um, you guys uh, have Lincoln Logs when you were kids? I had those in uh, elementary school, yeah. Gary, I've heard of. They're, I've they're, heard they're of very them, limited they're, in terms of what you can build. That's an American thing. Yeah. Oh no, you could build unbelievable stuff with them if you had enough. I did, n- never had enough. I had a bin that was like the size of a drywall mud bucket. You could you could just go crazy with it. Can you take that light bulb off your head? I, I'm just full of good ideas. I don't know if I can do that, Gary. I'm sorry. Okay, let's just let's just keep going. I'm gonna close the laptop, and that's gonna shut off Skype. Oh my God! Don't close the laptop. <laughs> Um, and I got this uh, iPhone case, oh, okay. which so I'm pretty people, happy about. Describe for people who aren't watching. Oh, nice. um, for people that may not be able to see it, it's yellow, and it has a little Starfleet um, logo on it. So it's kind of a, it turns my iPhone into Kirk, basically. Yeah. So Lloyd actually had uh, has a similar one. Uh, I think it might be where he probably idea. has, he has the, the blue one. He has he the ha- blue one. He has a science, science officer. officer. And there's, yeah. so there's a science officer one, and there's even one for the mirror universe, if you want to be really, really green. If you want, like, I can't wait, remember what, what? color... The tunic is the color, right? The, yeah, like the the green tunic. Yeah, I can't remember what color it is, but there is there is a Mirror Universe one that has the logo that they when when you go to the Mirror Universe, that's what they have. That's what I want. It. So that's the really geeky yeah. version. Yeah. And again, I'm not really a case person. I've been thinking about going caseless, but I I like this this one a lot, and it feels good in the hand. So I think I'm going to stick with it. Cool. Yeah. Well, so a, uh, I, you know, a good haul, I think, all all round for everybody. Good tech. Uh, and again, ironically, not a lot of tech stuff because we kind of yeah. just take care of that ourselves. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a nice. Well, I, you know, I, I handed down my old iPhone four, and then did, did, I, I guess you guys oh, might do well. a lot of tech I gave my dad my iPhone four. Huh? I gave my dad my iPhone four. I decided not to sell three hundred dollars. Okay, there you go. Good for you. Right. Yeah, I gave my mom my iPhone four. She was really stoked. Although I don't think she knows how to use it. So. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I learned over the holidays is that iOS and iPhone is now getting too complicated for normal people. Really? Seems like it. Well, no, I, I think it's it's not necessarily too complicated. It's just that there's always more things for them to discover. If they just want to make phone calls and take pictures, it is dead simple. They don't need That's to true. buy apps or buy music, especially buy music. Just put stuff in a folder, and then we'll never use it. If you want to blow people's mind, show them swipe to delete email. That's a that's a real <laughs> humdinger every time. <laughs> swipe to delete email. I'm, hey, I remember when they uh, first showed that, and, and all our minds were blown. Yeah. We take, again, we yeah. take it for granted like, oh. now, but at the time we were like, "What? That's 2007, crazy!" You January. just swipe. Yeah, and and if you want to really make people have an aneurysm, batch delete is uh, a life changer. Oh yeah, that's magical stuff. Uh, so, so sh- do you guys want to talk I, about some of the big stuff this year? So, yeah, let's I mean, talk about some. It is the end of the year, end of 2011. Yeah. Uh, this week, all in tested, we've been posting our favorites. So something we do, we don't do a top 10 list like Giant Bomb does. Uh, we don't because we don't always have uh, hands on time with every single cell phone or every single piece of electronic. But we do have favorites, things that right, we right. discovered this year, just personal from personal use, right. things that might already be out. Um, and you've been putting those up all week, right? Yeah. The last week yeah, or so. Yeah, so, uh, so we each talk about our, our personal What are your favorites. personal favorites? What's, what's your personal favorite piece of tech from this year? I this bought last this year. year uh, well, yeah, you don't have to have bought it, but like, you know, whatever I, your I've favorite used? is. Yeah. It's got to be the MacBook Air. Oh, I think that would be mine too. Yeah. And well, actually, to be fair, that, that was, was November. I, 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 I yeah. have the previous one, though. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's probably the, my, my favorite thing that I use every day. Yeah. Uh, mm, what well, about you, Will? Um, I, you know, I think mine might be my Zojirushi. <laughs> the flask? <laughs> yeah. Why not? That's tech. It's low tech, yeah. but it's tech. Well, you know what? Actually, Keep I think actually, my favorite technology. thing is AirPlay. AirPlay is, is that, a real That is favorite. magical. I was, I, was sitting, I was sitting on the couch last night and I said to Leah, do you want to see this video of this dog that yeah. smiles when someone plays the guitar? And she said, <laughs> sure. 
And I, I was like, why? Did, I, I got on my iPhone. I'm like, oh, but hold on a second. Press the button. And it's up on the big screen for us both to enjoy. And it's just, it's like, you have those moments you go, this is pretty fucking cool. I, I think AirPlay is definitely amazing, you know, quote unquote magical, but it will be next year. A uh, thing for me next year. Once, once. You're Apple, saying when you buy an Apple TV. Once the real Once Apple whatever TV, this next iteration yeah. is. Yeah. 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 It's I, more devices. Then I'm, re- I'm really using it. Uh, photo stream. Photo stream, photo stream and iCloud Photoshop's and all really of that good. stuff is pretty yeah. pretty amazing. And, iOS and people, 5. You know, and... People are saying, okay, Dropbox already exists. It's the same thing, right? It's syncing. It's in the cloud. It pushes to multiple yeah. computers. Yeah. Uh, there's a big difference between iCloud, photo stream, and Dropbox. Yes, they do different things. And, one, and, and someone put it very succinctly, iCloud syncs data and Dropbox syncs files. And right. that's a very fundamental difference between the iOS Explain. way of doing things and the PC Android way of doing things. When Apple wants us to move past, you know, with, with iOS, there is no file system accessible to the user. I mean, if you SSH into it, sure. But you see your, your information as data, like pictures, you know, music, songs, videos, not files on the PC. And that, for most people, is an easier way to comprehend things. Yeah, photo, so, photo stream is, is tremendous. I to, think it's my, one of my favorite parts of, of the cloud stuff. To, to give a, a real world example of how this blew normal people's minds, I had, uh, I think my iPad hooked up to the, to the TV and we were showing slideshows to my parents and grandmother and all that of all the stuff we've done this year. Yeah. And um, so I, I, while we were doing that, my grandmother is sitting on the couch and she's 93 and a little dementia and, you know, some other stuff going on. We'll t- I got a funny story to tell about that later. Um, but but we're sitting there, we're like, oh, hey, let's take a picture with everybody sitting here. It's not often that my mom, my sister, and my grandmother and I are all in the same place. Uh, so we took a picture with my iPhone. And when it got to the end of the slideshow on the iPad, that picture was there. How on, did that on, happen? You know, on the TV. Magic. It came across photo stream and everybody's like... Oh, you just took that picture two minutes ago. I was like, yeah, this is this is what happens when you set up your iPhone properly. And, you know, it's funny because we have this great site called Tested.com that tells you how to do all this stuff. All you guys have to do is visit it occasionally. They, don't, they still don't give a shit. But, you know, play Nintendo for a living is what my parents, I'm pretty sure, think I do. Um, it, it, that kind of stuff is really amazing when it works right and they've done a good job of making it work right i yeah. think yeah. speaking of that, that experience of testing our comp uh over the holidays that's when people from high school and, and college come back to the to the city come back to visit their family so yeah i had a few meetups with uh some high school friends and and definitely a couple of them went up and said hey i didn't realize you work for test.com i'm like yes how I could do. they not realize that because they don't they just know of tested from the footer giant bomb because they're all giant bomb fans, oh, okay. and they go, "Oh, there's that site tested that I've heard of, and see sometimes that Ryan or Jeff mentions, but right. I don't know who actually works there." Right, it's the other one. Yeah, it's the nerd site. Um, the other stuff that was huge for me this year, I I think I have iPad arm. Have you guys not had this? Ha- well, you guys use the MacBook Air is probably the way I use it. I, I go to the gym, so I don't no no problem there. No, no, no. I I've got like tennis elbow from holding the iPad crooked up. Like, uh, I, I, I don't, can't see where I am with the camera, but you're know, holding it crooked up and bent all the time. I'm going to have to go to no, the no. doctor. Will, you don't hold it like a baby. I hold it like you, a baby. You hold it like, if you could see the stream, you hold it like that uh-huh. but with on one side. Yeah. And you don't need to cradle it. That is the, the wrong way around. Way That's what I've done that has fucked up you, my you hold, yeah, you hold it like a, like a clipboard. It, like a clipboard. No, because then your wrist gets stiff. Yeah, your, ergo, your ergonomics are all fucked yeah, up. Yeah, I'm like, aware that I've made mistakes. Oh, my goodness. And and the, the real way to hold it is actually from the bottom corner because then the weight pushes down the corner. I actually that, I actually almost it never hold corner. it in a way where my hand is supporting it. It's always on a, on a lap or a knee or something. This is, this is the thing I've learned, is it has to be sitting in the lap. It can't oh, be holding. Goodness. Look at the way Steve Jobs did it when he first announced it. Do it the way it's Steve did it. Lap. Sitting in uh, a chair. That's why they brought that chair out on stage, so he could sit down yeah. and uh, have it in his lap. How are you liking that camera, Norm? Is it still, I, are you still feeling it's, good it's about it? It's the best thing. It's the best uh, piece of uh, photography equipment I've bought this year. It's um, and, and you got a MacBook Air sleeve from Rick, Rickshaw the other day? Yeah, this uh, I got from Fab, and uh, it's a local company called Rickshaw. Uh, they make really nice sleeves. How do you stop that from sliding out? Uh, you, gravity. It's, 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 it's fuzzy on the inside, so there's yep. friction. 
Oh, to actually hold. So if, can yeah. you turn it upside down and have it not fall out? Uh, no, it'll fall out. But I, okay. I just hold it for, in the right way. Okay. Um, but you can design the liner. You can pick what type of material and what color is the liner, the interior, and the exterior. And you it's chose all, blue, right. blue and orange. Blue and orange because they, it's a Hollywood movie poster. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. very good. Um, Brady. They just make them in uh, in San Francisco, so I like it. All right, yeah. good. Um, Should we yeah. talk? Uh, can we talk about Penny Arcade for a minute? If you want. I kind of feel like it's already boring, but okay. People, people are asking for it. I, I missed all the stuff that happened yesterday. Yeah, um, it happened I, real I, fast. I mean, it's, it, I mean, it basically blew up and, and is now basically almost practically over in within 24 hours. But it was very interesting while it was happening, for sure. So, so let's I, recap, because yeah. some people might not have heard. I, I guess this must have been a Wednesday morning. No, Tuesday morning. I'm sorry, Tuesday. Yeah, it's already been two days. Uh, Tuesday morning, uh, everyone woke up, went to Penny Arcade, and saw that Gabe had posted an email stream. This is on, actually on Reddit as well and some other sites uh, f- from a, uh, a reader who had I'll had right a terrible uh, consumer experience with uh, a company that makes uh, gamepad accessories. Right. Do we, I don't think we should. No, you know, we don't have to go into it. But he had yeah. ordered he had ordered a certain kind of gamepad uh, controller add-on. Yeah. Yes. And he had paid his money. Yep. But he had been delayed over and over and over again. So he had, you know, emailed to ask what was going on and ended up talking to this guy who ended up being like a third party contractor. Who was the PR marketing dude. Yeah. Who was just a complete douchebag, treating the guy like shit. You know, a classic example of like the worst possible way. You just don't talk to customers this way. Absolutely. Yep. So the the kid felt, you know, quite upset by that. Uh, Forwarded it to uh, to Gay. You know, Penny Arcade are are well known as like kind of champions of of gamers. Yep. And... um, I guess Gabe ended up talking to this this guy. Uh, he got he, got, he jumped onto the email stream uh, because the guy called out Pack specifically. Right. Yeah. Uh, not only was he rude to the customers, and I think it was more than one customer who had this experience. Right. Uh, but also he said, oh, "Don't worry. You know, th- this is new way of doing marketing. I don't care. You're just a lowly customer. You know, the business is always right. And I know people at Pax, at uh, you know IGN, at at other places. Yeah, I'm making a lot of bullshit claims. I know Cliff Blazinski and the mayor of Boston, and you know, I'm from Little Italy. You know, you don't want to be threatening me, like almost like kind of making like mafia style threats. Basically, this guy was punching way above his weight, not realizing, ironically, that he was talking to someone who actually does have a lot of muscle and a lot of connections and a lot of influence in the gaming industry. Um, and so, of course, Mike makes this this public, and uh, as a result, you know the the internet, you know, basically went to town on this guy and tore him to pieces to the point Absolutely. where his reputation has now been largely destroyed. Yeah. Well, he's done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He has the guy's no career. The the, ir- the irony, of course, being that a big part of what this 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 guy's company did was we can help you improve your your brand presence Image. and your internet, uh, you know, relations, and it's all you know. You want to make sure you when you when somebody googles you, you get positive results. And of course, you Google this guy now, and it's just an absolute just mm-hmm. pile on. Um, you know, any job interview that this guy were ever to have again, you know, you Google the guy's name and it's, it's I mean, all you talk over. talk about PR disasters of the year. That's, it came at the end of the year, but before then it was the whole, uh, uh, it was the Duke Nukem thing. Yeah, so now, but now the question is, is whether or not the internet response was, was ultimately disproportional. Like, the guy was obviously a douchebag who was yeah. very, very bad at his job. Um, and and Mike, you know, put him in his place. The problem is, you know, Mike, whether whether he chooses to or not, when he puts something up like that, he's he, he's going to mobilize a lot of very voracious, uh, avid fans. Now, what was interesting was Mike was talking about how he was bullied as a kid. Yes. And as a result, he admits that psychologically, he has kind of a soft spot here. He has no patience it's for bullies no at all. He is he is going to fucking. There's a great quote. He said he would burn everything yeah. he has. To he the will. Ground. Yeah. There's no proportional response. He will drop a nuke on you yes. if you if but, you act but, like a bully. Now I mean, the problem is it's not just him. Bull- it's everyone that he's everyone who is who wants to you know be like Mike and 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 follow him and uh, and again you know there's no shortage of kids out there with a lot of internet ability who were bullied you know if not probably just a few years ago and high correlation and, yeah so there is a very high correlation and so this guy yeah, and probably where it went too far is when they started digging out, you know, problems with the guy's personal life and, and really painting a very, very unflattering picture. The argument, of course, is, again, nobody nobody presented anything that wasn't already in the public domain. They just did a bit of internet detective work. But this guy's reputation, both professionally and personally, was utterly destroyed yes. in, the, in, the, in, 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 the, in the course it, of 24 to 36 hours. Yeah, it was... The, 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 the question is, there, there is such a thing as a proportional response. What, what, except on the internet when you can't mobilize you, you you can't corral these people it's like herding cats if everybody decides to pile on and it very quickly becomes something that's very fashionable to pile on and be part well, of the gang said herding cats it, it's not it's, that budweiser commercial <laughs> yes they did they, they did that commercial it's, um, well it's like nuclear war once you push the button you can't unpush it yeah 
Yeah. You know? And the thing is, yeah, there's, and, no, and, there's, and there's no way to. There's I mean, no, I guess Mike Mike can say if he wants to. You yeah. know, okay, enough, guys. And we've seen that happen before. And you can slow down some of it, but you can't stop everybody. Uh, and there's there's some dispute about whether or not this guy's family and children were actually threatened. And of course, once you go that far, you've gone way too far. Yep. Um, it's it's been very amusing, but it has also shown a little bit of the dark side of the internet. I think you know. I, about 24 hours in, I was looking at going, yeah, what, what do you want to do? You're basically just kicking the guy's dead corpse at this point. There's, there's, you don't really need to do anything else. The justice has been done and then some. Well, so, so, so it's in, easy to see both sides of this. In this case, you know, this guy clearly is an asshole. Um, maybe he has some mental problems. Maybe he has some drug abuse problems. It's unclear. Um, but but like, what if, what if instead of having, what if, it seems like most of this guy's problems are self-inflicted, probably. What if this guy was somebody who'd gotten hired and then had a nervous breakdown or something like this, and Mike pulled the trigger on him and the internet shit down his throat? You know, what? What? how responsible are, are, are we as the people who are, you know, fanning the flames um, for, for the for for what happens well and the other problem is this wasn't this guy wasn't even really a kind of a, a, a true representative of the company he was a third-party contractor the company that actually makes the product well, they, the, the big part of what happened was of course people now go on amazon one star the product this this product is now is now in the dirt as well so the owner of the company actually well, was quick to the owner of the company himself. did the only i predicted this um, immediately and it's not a difficult thing to predict because it's the only inevitable response the company is uh, it took a little while because it's over the holidays but as soon as they saw what was happening they they get in front of it, fire the guy, distance themselves from him utterly, disown him in every way because you've got to try and get your product and what you're doing mm-hmm. away yeah. from the nuclear bombs that are dropping on yeah. this guy so that you well, don't yeah. get damaged as well. Yeah. Some of the damage has been done. It's going to take a long time to get that Amazon ranking back, you know, yeah. and there are people that are going to go to that website, go to Amazon, look at this controller and go, oh, it's apparently a bad controller and not know why the rating is so low because there's one douchebag you know, th- threatened and, and bullied and insulted a customer and the internet responded. The product is tainted forever. I mean, yes. in, in the gamer community... But they are doing everything right. They've hired now a guy that seems to know what he's doing who is now, you know, trying to kind of reach out and restore relations. And the internet, again, the internet knows who's bad and, and good. Now, no one's really blaming yeah. the, the company that, that makes the, the, the product. They, they seem to be okay with well, those guys. they did guys. hire the guy. Yes, they did. They, they, and, and that obviously was a mistake. Yeah, should have done the research. I, mean, I saw, I saw something. Somebody posted something the the other day, uh, or today. I, didn't, I don't think it was in, in relation to this, but I think it was just a coincidence. But apparently, there's something. Called, I don't think it applies to this guy that we're talking about. It's called the Dunning Kruger effect. Have you ever heard of this? No. It's a psychological thing. So I'm going to just quote from Wikipedia very briefly. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a cognitive bias in which unskilled people make poor decisions and we reach erroneous conclusions, but their incompetence denies them the metacognitive ability to recognize their mistakes. The unskilled therefore suffer from illusory superiority, rating their ability as above average much higher than it actually is. I think that <laughs> applies to more than just this Apparently, case. It's oh, very, yeah. So basically you suck, but you think you're awesome is that's that's what well, dunning kruger syndrome story is the internet dude um and the fact this guy has been because he's been thrust into the public spotlight has been giving interviews up until very recently just in the last 12 hours saying i didn't do anything wrong so he's still suffering from what appears to be a complete oh uh, god disconnect what in if terms we suck of, yeah we i mean we could Oh, well, I, I don't you have, well, you have to, the, 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 on, the only way to know for sure is to externalize it and look at how successful you are. If your website is successful, if you are successful in your career, wherever you're probably, you probably don't suck at it. M- more validation, please. But if, if you are awful and you, your business is going down the pan, then you probably suck. I'll start a new in, service in the, so in I the can tell you if you suck or not. I'll give you validation or, you yeah. know. What do you charge for that though, Shan? Clout? <laughs> I think it's probably very. I think it's probably very, very um, uh, popular. This thing among celebrities because they're surrounded by people telling them they're they're great all the time. So even the externalization of it is cognitively dissonant. It's not an accurate reflection of what people actually think of you. Um, Anyway, look, it it was it was it was a it was a briefly an amusing episode which very quickly turned into I think quite a quite a sad episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think it's basically over. I think this company has done everything it can to kind of get out of the way and try and rebuild their reputation. And this guy again, I think I think he got what he deserved and much more. And the the discussion now is more is is about really about what the the internet 
going nuclear immediately. Again, there's no such yeah. thing as a proportional response on the internet. When yeah. an internet celebrity who commands a lot of respect and followers, someone like Mike at Penny Arcade, who I, I know personally, I think he's a great guy. Uh, I don't think he intended to hurt this guy as much as he did. Maybe he did. I don't know. I mean, he's come out. He's been quite... Uh, upfront about how you know he goes nuclear on bullies I mean, right is, away because he's happened before. Yeah. yeah, yes. I mean, there are lessons for everyone involved, and the four big groups are obviously these social marketers, these PR people. There's a prime example of how not to behave, and I'm sure everyone. I mean, my brother works in SEO, marketing, stuff like that. Uh, for those uh, headphones that we uh, reviewed, the, the, the like the. the your evil twin ones. brother. My evil twin brother, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he was like, oh, this guy's doing exactly what we're not supposed to do. So lessons there. There are lessons for companies, small companies who hire these marketers to represent them and that how much research they should do beforehand. There's lessons for the consumer in that, you know, don't take shitty customer service. Uh, just don't take it and, you know, record your emails and you can – May, do something about it. And then there's lessons for us for uh, how we should interact with these PR people because he called out a, a bunch of uh, uh, tech journalists who we uh, sent product to and, you know, why don't you have my back and, you know, called them unprofessional. So be right, careful. And then they all denounced him. Yeah. Um, I, I think the other big lesson is that you should always treat everything that you say to every single person on the internet as if it's going to be posted on the front page of Reddit. Yeah, you have to be very careful about this stuff. And as, as someone pointed out in the chat, I was uh, when this was still in the amusing phase, I was I was a big part of when I woke up and saw this story. I was very much and remain very much on Mike's side and on the side yeah. of the people that think this guy's an arsehole. I was posting a lot of links about it because um, I was bullied in school as well. I was a geeky kid in school. I got the shit beat out of me school many times. I have no patience. I think you bully the shit beat out of you. Many times, oh, man. and and and, and, ge and generally just treated like shit by boys. Norm, we didn't. All I used grow to be scared. There were some days when I was afraid to go to school because there were certain kids at school I was I was terrified of. Um, really? And and, and you, that, that that shit does not go away. You carry that forever. Oh, and so when I see, I I think bullying. Um, whether it be kids, I, yeah. I, you almost excuse it with kids because kids don't have their brains aren't fully formed yet. They don't know really how to behave like responsible adults. That's one thing. That's, uh, well, that's bullshit. No, no, no. no, no. Bull, bull, it's, no. I'm not saying it's excusable. I'm saying it's more understandable with kids where they don't they don't yet haven't fully come to understand the rules and laws of society, and they're still learning how to be human beings. Maybe. By the time you're an adult. And you should have learned how to be a human being, but you don't act like one. You act like a bully. I think acting like a bully is one of the most reprehensible things you can do in society. Mm -hmm. It's one of the worst ways you can treat other people. And so when you get nuked, when you get fucking destroyed for acting like a bully, I have no sympathy for you at all. And I think if anything, it helps. I, I, it's a warning to other people. Don't act, don't be a bully because look what happens these days if you try and do that and it gets on the internet. Again, having True. said that, and even though I was a part of the mob, I, it, it did get to a point where I started to become slightly uncomfortable with with how this guy was being treated. I, 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 we were we eventually got to a point where we were way past the proportional response. So I have mixed feelings about the whole. You thing, know, Sh Shenster in chat said something really smart. When kids are bullies, you blame the parents. When adults are bullies, you blame the bullies. That's that's exactly it. And yeah, and I absolutely. Mean, yeah, there's, there's 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 always an there's always an adult who isn't behaving responsibly somewhere in the in the mix. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't. You don't always. You, you're right. The, when you're a kid, you just hate the kid. You don't understand what's going on. Um, but they're, yeah, kids usually act like bullies because then they're, they're not being properly parented. Uh, and Louis C.K. has a good bit about bullies. Oh, he does. Yeah, it's in that special. Oh, that's I right. Watched, yeah, yeah. I went to watch on the plane, and I watched. Oh, uh, yeah. I watched uh, Curb instead. So. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I've got no patience for these people, and I think you know, I'm, I, I'd be the same. I would, I would, I would drop a nuclear bomb on them if if, if I could. Uh, and that, again, that's what happened. The, but you can the also make amends. I mean, bomb. you also get bullies can also be redeemed. I mean, if someone bullied you as a kid or was a bully, period, maybe not necessarily to you as a kid, when they grow up, sometimes. You know, they're, they end up being well-adjusted, successful Yeah, people. and again, you know, you don't have to be a genius psychologist to figure out that bullies act that way because they're damaged themselves. There's yeah. something, you know, as an adult, you feel sorry for bullies more than anything. There's a reason why they're acting out that way. It's because they're, they're obviously, there's obviously something damaged or not working right in their own lives that they, they compensate. They make The only way they can make themselves feel better is by making other people feel worse. And that's, it's sick and it's tragic. Mm -hmm. I don't, it, <coughs> excuse me. And when you take a moment to think about it, you do, you do ultimately, I think, pity bullies. But when you're yeah. the one being bullied or you see someone else being bullied, the, in, the, the gut reaction, the reaction that we saw play out in the last 24 hours is to destroy the person. Yeah, fuck and, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a like bad Santa. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I beat up a kid today. I felt real good about it. Yeah. Made me feel like I did something <laughs> with my life. So let, let's move on. I think we've covered it about as well as we, we can. So speaking of Christmas, again, I want to continue this talk because there's really nothing to talk about. Uh, did you see those posts on Twitter from uh, at Fart? 
are retweeting all the uh the, the oh my kids god who d- oh get so what this they no, wanted no, now you talk about so the only the only thing that is lower on the scale the scum scale than bullies are these motherfuckers <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> it was so bad. So okay, so so hold on. These the, the, he he started tweeting. Yes. Uh, the the self entitled. I didn't get what I wanted. Whether yes. it was an iPhone or an iPad or, a car. or an iPod Touch or a Lexus or a Lexus with a bow on it. Gun oh gray. my god! I couldn't believe that. Yeah, the, these were all real tweets, and judging by the pictures, I, don't, I, I think by the end it was fake. I I I think they were more real than fake. I hope for the love of for the love of all that's holy. Well, and by the way, just to reach back into the into the uh, the the bully thing, that became a problem as well. Is that people were creating fake Twitter accounts, and there was so much noise going out yeah. there that people were looking. It was impossible to separate what this guy had really said from some of the parody stuff that had very quickly thrown up. So um, I don't think that seems to be less of a problem here. But uh, so basically, there was a guy that collated all these people that were that were whining. And being ungrateful about how the presents they got for Christmas weren't good enough. Yes. And in the case, sometimes often getting great presents, but just not as awesome yeah. as the ones that oh, they wanted. The black iPhone is not as nice as the white iPhone. I'm so jealous of my brother. Yeah. But and people actually throwing tantrums and complaining. They didn't get a fucking car. Car. I should. The car I should have got. I didn't get. I get. I blame these Lexus commercials. You I know, told have, Gina have you seen I the, wanted an Omega Speedmaster. No. Have you seen the Mercedes and, ones? The Santa Mercedes commercials. No. Now? Oh my God. They have. Basically, Santa building the Mercedes himself oh to give God. out, and then picking out the red Mercedes as a sleigh. Well, to be fair, Santa originally was German, right? So, yes, <laughs> I guess I guess it Klaus, kind of fits yeah. into Klaus. <laughs> it all fits. Klaus drives Mercedes. Hey, can we talk about the wrapped presents thing for a minute? Sure. Yeah, uh, it, you, uh, your wife Gina p- posted a question on Twitter. I, uh, I I don't know how, whether this is actually a big, actually a point of contention and dispute in your family, uh, but. It was whether presents, Santa delivers presents, yeah. wrapped or yeah. unwrapped. Now, there are a lot of, lot of uh, semantics and details that come with I this, right? I had no so, idea that there was even an option for this. So is this something that you would tell your kids? Like, well, ki- tell kids or just the concept of presents from Santa? Okay. So when I was a kid, okay, there would be presents from mom and dad, presents from the sibling, yep. presents from the grandparents, and then there would be a couple of presents from Santa. Usually, one of them would be something really awesome, and one of them would be socks or something. So you, you know. were smart enough to to realize that not every present could be from Santa, but maybe oh, just one or two, or, or from Santa. Yeah, but it's, so for example, when like when I got the TI nine nine four A, pretty sure that was a Santa present. And with it came <laughs> like two extra cartridges. There was like another package from Santa that was a couple of cartridges. So you so you open the TI nine four A, and then because Santa knew that I was getting that, he would be the only one that would bust a couple of other games or, or basic cartridges or whatever you would get I- into that pile. I don't know if there's ever really if there's really a definitive answer on this. When I think about like famous images of Santa that I can remember, yeah. and you've got like his, his sack of toys. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the presents are wrapped, and sometimes you can see that, like the toy train or whatever that's actually in there, is just there. You know, I sometimes think, it wraps, sometimes they're not. I think, yeah, it all depends on the depiction. The depiction, if he's carrying the bag and you see just pack uh, items in the I, bag, they are packages wrapped. Right. But if he's taking something out for a child in a movie or in a picture, like giving them on the spot, right, it may or may not be unwrapped. Right. Okay. I think the well, also, when he's going down the chimney and leaving stuff under the tree, they that are is, wrapped. That is wrapped. They are yes. absolutely wrapped. But there I, are two I, types of presents. Let me finish. Two types of presents I think always come unwrapped. That might have a bow. One is a train set. Yeah. And the second is a wooden pony. And a bicycle. S- same thing. Wooden pony, bicycle, or basically a clothes. Something you ride. Yes, exactly. Even a real pony. Now, you the, the reason for that, pony. not only for presentation, is because those things are fucking hard to wrap by parents. You want to lay out the train set immediately for the kid to play with. Yeah. And the bicycle has to be built. So... Okay, so or sometimes it's kind of like the bicycle, but like because it's something that's hard to wrap, it just has a bow. Yeah, on that's it right. It has a bow. Right, right. That's not technically wrapped. I think the bicycles were covered in garbage bags when we got bicycles. That's from terrible. Plus. Like oh, surprise, garbage bag. What's inside? What would have a bow? Oh, does a that mean bag? that at the North Pole, mm-hmm. that there's a gift wrapping division in Santa's workshop? Like oh, once, it's, the, it's, once it's the elves the built the toys, are there elves that now just wrap them? Well, like we saw an elf. There are the you know not so smart elves who couldn't build the 800 meter quota basically, and Why those elves 80s? got got 
demoted to the wrapping division. See, that to and, me and is that to me is the much more relevant question in this day and age. Is Santa? It seems a bit antiquated. The idea that you know, you, you think about the, the toys that Santa's going to give you. I was making a workshop like wooden trains and stuff. Like he's yeah. not making iPads and the sort of things well, that in kids Elf, actually want now, right? So okay, I, I think I'm not talking about <laughs> Santa and that's, that's a great mass commercial media. for Foxconn. Put all their workers in elf costumes. Yeah. Oh boy. I mean, you know, and again, in the in the, the, the reality of like Santa's workshop, is it probably looks a lot more like Foxconn yeah, than right. anything else, yeah. right? Look at the glee on his face as he's talking about Foxconn and elf costumes. <laughs> Who Norm? Norm. I don't know. I like I, that I, image. I, it's it's, it's so much happier than like Suicide. Yeah. Oh boy. But but my question was actually about in your home. Okay. What like what is the tradition? Do you come down under the presence of Santa wrapped or are they unwrapped? They're wrapped. I had no They're idea. Wrapped. They're always wrapped. That's what I said. They're mostly always wrapped. Ninety five percent wrapped. Yeah. So I did a poll on the internet. Okay. Uh seventy people responded. And uh, th- it was about two thirds, one third split between wrapped for Santa, two thirds, and one third were just laying out, so the kid could sneak down from the room, see the Santa present, and then know what he got for Christmas, go back to bed. I do not approve of this at all. The surprise is half the present. That is exactly right. It's I, all about the joy, the wonderment of knowing. Did you actually get the thing you asked the fat right. man for? Yeah, it's a gamble. Or did you get the shaft? Yeah. I mean, if the kid wanted something in particular and wasn't wrapped and you're walking down the stairs and you see it and it wasn't what you wanted, you turn around immediately. That's disappointment. Okay, so I, I got spoilers here. If you have kids with you right now, may want to turn the radio down, come back later to this show. Um, we were ta- I was talking to my brother-in-law, who's, who's somewhat devious. Uh, a fantastic guy, but, but very clever. And when he was beginning to get suspicious about Santa Claus... He uh, he did something that I never would have considered when I was 10 years old or 8 years old or however the hell old you are. He sat on Santa Claus' lap and he told Santa Claus one thing that he wanted that he never, ever mentioned to any of his parents, to either of his parents. Okay. It was a test. Oh, I see. To see if the gift was really from Santa. To see if, to see if he got the gift that he asked Santa for. Well, right. well, how did he tell Santa? Do you, was it in a letter? No, he went and sat on his lap at the mall. I oh, said, well, you oh. see, the way around that is there needs to be a system where the mall Santa can then relay what yes. the kid was told back yes. to the parents. I don't want some, to alarm some type you. Of a, yeah. Yeah, it's some kind of secret yeah. thing. You've clearly not been very near mall Santa's recently. Well, recent. that's, that's well, no, an They op- need to have better ones. That's an opportunity for the mall at a search. That's a, that's a new right? service not they Not only the photo. Yes. If, yeah. you wanna, if you want to tell the, if the parents want to hear what the kids actually right. get. Right. And then you can use statistics. 95% of parents who pay for that surcharge, their kids are extra happy. I would pay Christmas. for that. It's the same. It's the same yeah. little bit of magic when they put your name like on the, the back list. of the Mickey Mouse ears, right. so that the, so that the guy can come over and yeah. say, "Oh, or Mickey e. told e. me to look out for when you." When ET says your name at Universal Studios at the end yes. of the ride, same yeah. thing, same I'm thing. It's all you, part of the magic. I'm going to tell you where my where my brother in law Barry messed up them. You know, he, Will. He, at this point, I can't tell if that hat is fake or real because if you you've been using yeah, that could just be a really good ARG hat. It's it's not an ARG hat. What 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 I what I, what he what he messed up on was he asked his mom and dad for every other component of a football uniform except for the helmet. I don't get it. Oh, so, so he asked were, Santa for the helmet, and he, he asked, asked Santa for the helmet, and he asked them for the pads and the jersey and the cleats and the pants. And, and the, the parents weren't smart enough to figure out he still needed the helmet. The parents figured it out. Okay. Uh, yeah. well, Christmas was safe. Oh, I see. So, yeah, he's, he's, his plan was not that flawless. You, need, you basically yeah. need to come up with like a unique item on its own that only Santa knows about. Here's the Absolutely. problem. So you think you're being smart, but what you don't know is the mall yeah. that we're running yes. is smarter than the kid. Oh, absolutely. But kids, are, I think, are smarter than us these days. What they're going to ask of Santa? Because I think parents are like like – like uh, like Will's parents, they yeah. t- teach their kids. You know, Santa gives you some things, but parents give you most things because yeah. you just want the kids. Yeah, parents give you the good stuff. Right. The other, the other, but kids are smart now. What they would ask of Santa are things they knew their know their parents would never get. Right, like super expensive things. Right. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but yeah, but more, more Santas are already trained to kind of talk kids up down off of that stuff. Oh, okay. I didn't um, realize that. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Well, apparently this year one of the stories was more Santas being trained to tell kids to lower their expectations <laughs> oh, for Christmas. So disappointing. Because, you know, parents are broke right you now. You 1% kid, I'm going to bump you off the lap. But one very easy way to do the do the thing where you're getting around the kid is basically just mic the, the grotto and have yeah. the parents stand be, stand in somewhere in, in where the, they're, they're getting the sound yeah, feed. Yeah, yeah. And also that's good just because you, that way you know that, you know, Santa's not, you know, saying inappropriate shit to your kids because <laughs> who knows true. what the fuck's going on. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, that would be a good way to do it. That keeps the Santa's honest, and it also you know makes sure that keeps you... the Santa's honest. What kind of world do we live in that we need to keep the Santa's honest? Oh, unfortunately, we live in a world with all kinds of <laughs> pedophiles and scumbags <laughs> who are probably thinking they're putting on a Santa outfit. Picket line: Keep the Santa's honest. Yes, at the local Stonestown Mall. You got to do it. I'm so sure. I, I do have one heartwarming Christmas story to tell, and then okay. I'll then I'll be done with the Christmas stories. Um, as previously mentioned, my grandmother, you know, ninety three years old. Uh, uh, almost 93, I guess, this year. A uh, little bit of dementia. It happens as we get older. Uh, basically, she has a little bit of difficulty transitioning short-term memories into long-term memories, which is something that, that, that happens to a lot of people. You guys can look forward to that with me in the future, should we all live that long. Um, it's hard to hold a conversation with her because of this, right? What? Can't, what? Can't... Oh, okay, yes. Go on. Right. Thanks. That was very clever, Norm. Uh, serious topic. My feelings are hurt. Uh, my father, as, on Christmas Day, she was telling jokes. She was sharing some of my grandfather's classic jokes, um, real humdingers from Brooklyn in the 40s, uh, with, with Gina, who hadn't heard many of them because she didn't ever meet my grandfather. And uh, she, was get, she was really much more animated than normal and really engaged, which was really nice. And uh, my father busted out the iPhone and started asking her questions about growing up and her, and her youth and all that. And she told stories for an hour and a half, which is something she hasn't done in a long time. So she can't really hold a conversation with you because she can't remember what you're talking about from five minutes to the next, kind of like me. Um, but, but sitting down with her and recording, I mean, we filled Dad's iPhone up with, with video of her telling stories about you know, England during World War II and what it was like to be one of the first women to join the army in, in, during the war and and working on computer stuff in the 50s and in the U.S. Um, and it was really interesting. I, I highly encourage anybody who still has uh, the luxury of grandparents or, or elderly parents, whatever, to, to go out and do the same thing because it was, it was really good and, um, I mean, it was, it, was, it was really amazing. Yeah, so. I agree. I think that's, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. That's it. Sorry right. to be a downer. It wasn't a downer. I thought it was quite quite heartwarming. Yeah. Well, it would have been that. probably would have been delivered a little bit better if I wasn't coming across uh, Norm's laptop. So. No. Oh, there's a meme. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. They just they 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 just <laughs> get created <laughs> immediately. Shit. You you kind of walked into that one. Well, I'm gonna put the hat over the <laughs> hat over the camera. It took me a second, but th- thanks, Gary. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Just end the podcast now. Oh my goodness. Um. All right. So what's next? What else? That's filthy. Do you want to talk about Engadget posted a list of the top 10 like tech fails of 2011? Oh, can, we, can we guess? I haven't read the story. Can we just guess? Oh, uh, well, your camera's off. Screwed up. Okay, there it goes. I put my hat over because okay. you guys are assholes. <laughs> um, so the top 10 failures of the year. It's got to be WebOS. Okay. HP, just in general. Yeah, I'm going to have Gary pop the list right now while you start. Um, get, well, I tweeded it. Can you, uh, you, you have I, a Twitter I'll, feed I got there or something? I'll open it, but I'm not going to look at it. I, okay. I have it open on my. Uh, I know, but I actually don't have anything in front of me right now to like remind me of what they were. I, I remember what some of them were. Yeah. Well, okay, so. Web uh, AT and T, T Mobile, obviously. Okay. Yep. Yes, uh, T Mobile, AT and T was HP, on there. HP Touchpad. Uh, uh, I think that was on there. It's got to be on there. Touchpad's got to be on there. Yeah, HP Touchpad, AT and T, T Mobile. Well, let me let me pull. Let me. Okay, let me I, I, I've got it open. You guys. Okay. You, All you right. Guys, Guessers, I'll be the judge. All right, so I, I remember seeing them, so I, I might be guessing. I'll just be trying to pull them from memory. But AT and T T Mobile was obviously a big. I would one. say the Motorola Zoom. Uh, I don't think that was on there actually. No, that's not on the list. Really? That's, um, that was this year. So eight hundred dollars LTE delayed for six months, even though they sold it. No memory card work. I think huge failure. Uh, PlayStation Network was on there. I think, okay. I, actually, in fairness, I would just say Android tablets. I don't think it's worth singling out the Zoom. No. Android, I, I agree. Android ta- given given that they they are giving Apple such a, a strong fight in phones, I think the fact that they made zero, they didn't gain an inch of ground in 2011, not one inch. I, and I think that's. And in fact, they in real terms they giving. went backwards because Apple continued to sell and sell and sell and gain and gain market share, and Android didn't do a fucking thing in tablets this year. And I think it's pathetic i think apple definitely gained more ground but i think android i think there are some people who are very happy with android tablets with like, the ones who have. i think some people have the transformer have the transformer prime even have the samsung galaxy tabs are very happy with it and you know technically kindle fire is an android tablet Okay. The Kindle Fire is the one saving grace. Yeah, the Kindle Kindle Fire, which came in right at the last minute, which again, many people don't even think of it as a as an Android tablet because it's so heavily uh, forked for uh, for for Kindle. 
Um, but again, I, I at the beginning of 2011, I would have been prepared to say there's going to be at least one killer app Android tablet this year, and we didn't see a single one. We saw more. We saw so it's much stuff fire. thrown against the cliffs and and just shattered. They're just wrecked. I saw no. I, I agree with you that I saw no high end Android tablet that I thought would be a a that could go ten rounds against the iPad. I thought that was a sure thing this year. It didn't happen. Okay, other other big stories. Okay, big failures. Um, big failures. A uh, so this was kind of a smaller one, but it didn't make Engadget's list. Was that that um, that extra stick dongle that they made for the 3DS? That was on there. Really? Yeah. Oh, that, that's a. Uh, that's I, didn't think, I didn't think that was. I didn't, yeah. yeah, I didn't think that was that exciting. Yeah. Uh, well, remind us of some of the others because I'm. Okay, blanking. so we're not going to play the guessing game. What about just re- research in motion? Just in general. Just in general. Yeah. I mean the playbook. The fact that they Black still ship the new OS, yeah. and that they had multiple outages that lasted multiple days. Yes. Pretty bad. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, that company is just inexorably marching towards extinction. It's just a matter of time before they are a memory. Yep. Uh, what about what about PSN? We talked about. Yeah, yeah. we talked about course, that. Yes. Um, yeah. PR PR disaster. Um, they'll 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 recover. Do you remember when Netflix said that they were going to split out the disc? Uh, oh, God. definitely, okay. a, definitely there a tech fail. That's absolute, yeah. And yeah. again, yeah. you could, even though Netflix is not in any of the same kind of same, same kind of dire straits as yeah. um, uh, Research in Motion, you could say that 2011 was kind of an annus horribilis for Netflix just generally. I'm sorry, what could you say? Annus horribilis. Oh, okay. But it means horrible year. Sorry, no, no, I, I got that. You just crackled up, and it, it Co- compared like to about an anus. Uh, okay. compared to the year before. Because meteoric rise of Netflix they've had a, they've in, had a tremendous ten, tremendous history up until this one yes. year when they just seem to make blunder after blunder. Well, it, it, with I think the price, costs are too high. The price hikes were not good. And again, there's a lot a lot of this I, was internet entitlement syndrome. I think Netflix got more punishment than they deserved. Yes, there's again the internet mob mentality piled on. Again, even with the new pricing, Netflix is an incredible value for yeah. what they offer. And and I think Netflix is facing. Uh, Resistance from both ends, consumers and also content partners who yeah. now want a bigger share of the pie. Yeah, yeah, they, they've got problems coming up. So it next, sucks being the middleman. So uh, they, they very poorly. Oh, you know what often seems to happen is anytime a company where the CEO of a company tries to also be the front man and like get out there and go, "Hey guys," like it never works. Well, they always it, fuck up. Jeff, Jeff Bezos. Three companies. Yeah, I suppose. Um, but the price hiking thing, the quickster split, and then very quickly backpedaling on that just seemed like they know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Um, Dude should have sold that at Twitter account day two. Yeah, totally. Uh, oh, and you know they're under siege from Redbox and other. Pl- I'm actually wondering why Netflix doesn't have those those kiosks up up yet. They, Netflix branded branded kiosks not not worth it for them. They want to get out of this business. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. A lot for those warehouses. I think you're right. Uh, and then of course you know we ended up with all these r- rumors about Verizon just going to buy them, which is kind of crazy as well. Yeah. yeah. Would you put a new Xbox dashboard? No, oh, no, I, I would put, I would put that in the list of fuck ups though, because yeah. that Xbox dashboard is a fucking abomination. And you know what? Netflix with that because I started using that heavily this past week. Yeah, I for the lay user having that in apps and not in video, huge mistake. And that's something that and I know it's technically an app for the Xbox, but if it should be in both, it, it should be in both. It, it's a pointer. Yes, Netflix there are some, should be in video. There are some things that it does really well. Uh, that, I, that I still does it that I like. Like if you're watching, a, working your way through a TV show, once one episode o, o, o is over, it'll queue up the next one right away. On but Apple you, TV, you got to go back and manually get it. But you lose stuff in the after credits. You lose you lose it after credits. You lose a whole bunch of stuff. Basically, Xbox, the Netflix, X, Xbox 360 Netflix experience went from being the number one choice for me to like the last place choice. I'll go to PlayStation 3. I'll go to Apple TV before I'll use the 360 interface until they fix it because it's a fucking mess. Yeah. So Netflix, yeah, just in general, I would say it's a tech fail this year. Now there's a there's a few smaller things they have on this list that I don't I don't think are are big enough to be relevant on this kind of a this kind of a list. Yeah, stretching um, to make ten. I'm sorry. That's why you, they're stretching to make ten. I don't think they had ten. I think they have way more than ten here. Okay. More they have way those, more than ten here. What about the ones? Uh, they have they have the Kobo box, the uh, Fusion Garage, which is the you know what was going to be the the crunch pad. That was this year. Uh, well, that's no, what they that say. Well, year. Fusion Garage shut down a few weeks ago when nobody oh, okay. cared anymore. Because they, they relaunched with a new, uh, their, their new uh, phone UI. Yeah, and then the No tablet, the K&O, the student oh, tablet, the, the dual 17-inch uh, tablet, yeah. 
Yeah. Someone in someone in chat actually just made a really good point that wasn't on Engadget's list, but really should have been. Is is Apple fucking up Final Cut? That was a huge embarrassment. Absolutely. That's yeah. not on Engadget's list. Well, I, but the thing is, if you think about things that affect normal people, fucking up Final Cut isn't probably no, no, that no. big. That's a I, big I deal. No, Conan. These other things. Had had skit yeah, out. Conan was doing skits on it, dude. Yeah. Uh, that's true. That's true. Um, the, the jawbone up, the appearance and then immediate disappearance. Ah, and full yeah. so we never did a follow up, but we went from you having yeah. it on your wrist to the next day. Them it's not, not there. Th- apologizing for it and giving people's money. But I mean, they made such a, a very rare retreat that a company completely puts you know hands what? up and go, you know what? We screwed I, I up. Com- it's a I shit product. Them. Everyone gets their money back. That was very good of them. Very good of them. And, and they got more funding as a result. Yeah. The, well, so, but, more, but hold on. That's, that's how you handle it. It's just so rare to see yes. that happen. Four refunds. You don't have to mail it back in. Do you think the product though was uh, my my? When I was talking to you, it didn't sound like it was that bad. That that kind of response was necessary. My job on up never had the battery problems. Right. Uh, the only thing it did have was that I thought the software was lackluster. Right. Right. Um, again, it seems like again almost a, a, a disproportionate response in terms of how how much they backpedal. Like everyone gets their yeah. money back. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. They put the uh, bad battery life for the HTC Thunderbolt on. I don't think that's entirely fair. I think all of those first gen Verizon LTE devices had bad battery. That, life. that one kind of became the poster child for it, though, right? Uh, well, that was the one that sold, they sold more of those. But that LG phone had the same problem. It came out at the same time. I think it's just just. I think LTE fair. this year uh, was both a hit and a miss. Well, and then the other thing on battery life problems, we should talk about the Vita and the 3DS because both have terrible and batteries. You know what? And, four and hours. the new iPhone. IPhone, uh, new, new iPhone 4s still has terrible battery compared to the iPhone 4. I, you know, I I think I I don't I'm not experiencing that, but I, I maybe absolutely experiencing it as someone who checks battery obsessively. Uh, have you? Did you restore I, I, the backup I, or did you do a wipe? Completely wipe. Never restore the backup because I don't need to because I have iTunes Match. Oh, okay. Um, uh, iPhone 5. Okay, I so I, I disagree with this one. I know I'll get shit for it because I'm the Apple fanboy, but I think this one was a bit silly. The, they're the saying the app, they're title? saying the iPhone five iPhone is a tech no the iPhone five is a tech fail because that's no. not what we got. I agree with Gary. That's I think that's that's a reporting fail. That's a reporting and also a consumer expectations fail. And you know what? iPhone five was one of the number one search terms of that like, several months when Google released their Zeitgeist numbers. Um, that was people hyping it up and expecting too much. I, it, I think here's the thing. People were building those stories. The reason there's all those hype stories is people want to build keyword density around what will be incredibly valuable terms when the products launch. That is exactly yeah. what happened. Because we know a five will eventually come out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, I mean, it's it's a commercial decision. That's fine. People got to do what they got to do to make money. But I mean, just don't read those stories and they won't exist in the and, future. And, and again, a lot of it was just a result of people getting carried away with their own, own expectations at a point where it's already, Apple's already started to establish now yeah. a fairly predictable TikTok cycle with the three, the three, three G, the three GS, now the four and the four S. I don't know why people were, like, well, you were expecting it. You were one of the well, people now, saying there'll be a five, right? Points, there won't be a four S. Now, now we have enough data points that it is actually a, a, there's actually two data points. Before there was one data point and some change. Now there's uh, an established pattern. But now there's an established pattern, exactly. They'll probably break it next year. Who knows? Yeah. Um, the the location tracking, they have Carrier IQ on here. Uh, I think it's actually, f- they, they need to actually have the iPhone tracking as well, because that was a problem, if you recall. Well, actually, right. iPhone owned up to year. and paid, yeah. paid people, you know, consumers. Right. Um, yeah, so, so everybody has been tracking yeah. uh, uh, which cell towers you connect to. Carrier IQ was a big story, though. It was, it was a big story for a week. It was I, the same it was thing. Definitely it, overblown. Yeah. The iPhone thing was a big story for a week too earlier this year. All right, what else? Uh, Let's finish the out the list. The flip. The yep. flip. This was, a, yeah. this was a boner. I don't know if it was it, it, if you call that a fail. It was just very, it was very surprising. Well, it's not that surprising if you think about. I guess any time a product is killed off, it's it's got to be a fail of of some kind. They right? saw they saw the writing on the wall. They had products ready to launch soon after, soon right around that time frame, and they. Cancel that completely. I don't think that MP4 market is dead. That's what these companies call it, the MP4 market. As yeah. Co- uh, as was HC. Um, I think we're going to see them go on for another two years, just like the home camcorder market. I think. Well, and like the MP3 player market. And, and MP3 player market. But basically, any anything that you're right that, that your smartphone does, if yeah. you only do one of those things, if your product only does one of those things dedicated, you're probably in trouble. You're in trouble. It's not that you're dead, and it's not like people, there's not a market for 
your product. It's just that it's you're gonna, gonna, you're, you're, you've got a whole other headache to worry yeah. about. Do you see, the, you're going to do something really different. The interesting thing about this is with Cisco leaving that market, unlike the MP3 player where Apple is a clear leader, and unlike the the camcorder market where the established you know Panasonic and Sony and those guys are, are have, have market share, lead market share. There's not really you know the the market that remains of those of those MP4 camcorders is pretty divided between three or four different players. You know the bloggy and the uh, but more really more the ZI8 and it's, it's, uh, it's and a it's it's code it's uh it's Kodak smartphones Sony and um, and that's it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I want to see the rise. Guys. I mean, if you look at the whole episode, obviously it's a failure in terms of they paid a huge amount of money to buy this company yes. and then basically threw it in the yeah. garbage. It was, it was just a, 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 just a, a colossally expensive waste of time and money. I mean, that's a failure. Yeah, and, and I don't then, think they ever fulfilled their ambitions either. Yeah. The were, last, okay. the last thing on this list, uh, making sure I didn't miss anything. Did I say? Did we talk about the Notion Inc. Adam already? Yeah. I don't I think mean, that counts because yeah. I don't think that, I never thought that was a real product. It was a real product. People had it, but. Yeah. Four hundred. They sold four hundred of them. Yeah. That's not a real product. Yeah. Um, Duke Nukem Forever. One last chance to kick Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's hard to believe that a game that took fourteen years to develop wasn't very good. Um, yeah, Duke Nukem Forever was was a big failure. I think it was kind of embarrassing. For, I mean, did it sell? I mean, can they at least yeah, sure? I think, I think they, they can at least enough. say they made money, right? And they own the IP to make future. And games. there's DLC coming, and I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's the last Duke Nukem game that you'll see. No, but that so. whole story was a failure in the sense that it's embarrassing. I think for everyone concerned that they, that they couldn't make a game in the time that it took. Yep. Um, it's embarrassing that, they tried to salvage it and, and say that it was going to be a good game well the fact that another developer came in and it, it's kind of like you, you know you, I've made this analogy before but you, like, you strain to open a, a, a jar and someone comes <laughs> along and goes there you go and just opens it for you and then all like, well rotten. what was wrong with me why, why couldn't I get it done yeah. and it's not like it was a particularly difficult game it seems like I mean it's fairly straightforward first person shooter but they weren't pushing the boundaries in fact the game really felt like a throwback um, but what it, re- it what it re- like a back because it was a game of that. It was but, but what it but what it really got dinged for was was just the the terrible lame humor and just yeah. the sexist just, lame potty humor jokes about shit and piss and tits. I mean, it's just pathetic. Duke Nukem Forever did it wrong. Saints Row the Third did it right. I think Duke Nukem is is a character that needs a complete reinvention because time has just passed him by. It's not unless you're twelve or mentally somehow uh, deficient. It's just not funny. It's just lame. Yeah. Um, and so the game wasn't great. The humor was 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 very sad. Um, and of course, you know, and even claimed another one of these internet victims, where the uh, the PR guy yep. who threatened magazines yep. on Twitter yep. lost his job. I mean, another 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 case of the internet, um, you know, not letting you get away with with bullshit behavior. All right. So we're but, uh, we're run- we have about forty minutes left because okay. before we have to get out of here. Uh, I think we should talk about the successes of this year. We did kind of talk about our favorite stuff, and mm-hmm. then we should talk about next year. All right. So I'm going to predictions. Quickly, I, I want an opportunity to uh, to press a button. All right. It's so, fun, right? Yeah. Press the button. The, it's magic. Uh, 2011 also a great year for technology. Oh, we got. Well, I think the one last thing. 3D. 3D. Oh yes. Well, I mean that's. I oh. mean I don't think was that's that, a failure that just list? this year. No, but it should be. It, yeah. That I, I think, think was pushed heavily, more heavily this year than last year even. It's, it's not just 3D. It's it's everything about TVs that isn't picture quality. Yeah. 3D apps. Have you ever? Have either of you ever looked at the apps in your TV nope. after the day you set it because up? Because a TV is just is basically just a TV, a and the, and and they've so, they've thrown everything and the kitchen sink at this idea of trying to innovate with TVs. It's very difficult. Um, again, we'll, we'll be very interested. We've seen this story before, right? Everyone tries to do this. None of it works. Apple comes along and does it right eventually. Well, I'll be very interested to see what we the will Apple, get to that Apple TV for 2012 is. 12, 2012 time. But for right now, I, I think Will is right. 3D is just is just one big facet of all the TV shit that we've seen this year that just has not been compelling yeah. at all. Yep. So successes for 2011. Uh, I things. think iOS iOS five is my is the big success for me. I mean that that is a is a massive update. Uh, they they brought iOS on parity with with Android finally with no, better notifications, good notifications. Um, and you, okay, speaking of notifications, but, but, Will, you're also on record saying that you think it's kind of the most bloated, confusing version of iOS. Yeah. I do. I, I mean, I, I think you don't get it both ways. I think if you want something that's going to be uh, accessible and and good for me as a power user, it's going to be confusing and it's going to be hard to use. It's good that keeps me in business, right? Norm and I 
if 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 everything was getting easier to use every year, why would anybody come to testing? So yeah, sorry, it's good guys. For guys like you, but the whole point of iOS is meant to be for and anyone can use it, right? That, 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 those times are past. I like it. I use. I don't use it that much. I use it less notifications. Now. The slide down notifications menu thing. You know, I what, use, you know what I'm using less, almost not at all now is Siri. I hardly ever yeah, use it. Yeah, but you know what I still use iMessage. iMessage is fantastic. iMessage is my favorite single feature. iMessage and photo stream are the best features of iOS. To be liberated from yeah. from the t- yeah. the tyranny of text message yeah. data rates is is yeah. wonderful. For, for me, the big thing on iOS five is that with photo stream and, and iTunes Match, I don't have to plug my computer into my phone anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to worry about Wi- syncing, Wi-Fi syncing, all, all that, that yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, we I, love all that. iTunes it's, Match plus Siri, though. That's a great for, for your car because I don't have to download the songs. I have, you know, 60 gigs of music, 80 gigs right. of music on my computer at home. Right. It's, an, it's an iCloud or it's an iTunes Match. I can say Siri, play and again, a random song. And again, and when Siri works, it. I actually think if I was making that top 10 fail list, I would, be, I, would be, I would put Siri in there as almost like an honorable mention because yeah. it does not work that well yet. And that's, they need to get on that shit. Yeah. Uh, well, other great things this year, I thought uh, Sandy Bridge uh, Mobile out this year. I mean, again, that, that ties with uh, the MacBook Air, but also this whole new uh, category of Ultrabooks. And yeah, I think Ultrabooks are another big win. I yeah. agree. Yeah. So I mean, and I, and I don't. Well, don't and, the Mac, the and the MacBook Air. Air is, I think, has to be singled out as as part of that. I mean, it's, oh, that ended yeah. up the with this, with this is, latest revolution. They really made it a tremendously compelling. It is product. an Ultrabook. It runs yeah. Intel. I mean, by Intel's definition, it has their mobile Sandy Bridge processors, and well, it's it's it, the. the and category, again, like the iPad, basically created an entire new product category. Well, it's a category where the just, alternatives are just compelling. Unlike, right. Unlike the iPad, like right. tablets, right. the Ultrabooks from Acer and Asus, right? HP's and, and, got one, right? HP has one. Uh, HP with the folio, we haven't had hands on that with yet. But like, I, uh, the, uh, the ThinkPad ones. Because we had one on Octobercast, right? Someone brought one in and actually looked pretty yeah. sexy. They're all, and they're all very, very great laptops. Yeah. So, the, the, the big yeah. question and, I have And this is, is great because I think the death of the netbook, yes. again, was something that had to happen. I think the netbook was a terrible yeah. product category. Yeah. Um, it a lot was of people kind of, say, hey, the MacBook Air is a netbook because their definition of netbook is lighter than, you know, four pounds. Those people are dumbass. Well, no, yes. but, no, but that's not true because there's a it's, big difference between a, net, a netbook and an ultrabook. And, and, yep. and an ultrabook is a real computer. I would not consider a netbook to be a real computer. Yes. Netbooks are small, cheap computers uh, running on old hardware. I mean, I think I think netbooks ultimately kind of contributed to the advancement of technology and that they were a stepping stone to getting us to where we are now uh, with ultrabooks. Yep. We needed to, to kind of suffer through the bullshit of netbooks to get to ultrabooks. But yeah, ultimately now netbooks are clearly are finished. They're at the kind of a footnote in tech history. Um, and, you know, we're in I'm, the ultrabook age now. And we're very happy about it. I'm going to tell you guys a secret. Apple didn't invent ultrabooks. Intel did. Apple took the, the hardware that Intel made as a result of the first MacBook Air being underpowered. Intel developed CPUs that will fit into that chassis and that power uh, TDP. But ULV, ULV chips were created because... Yeah, manufact or because OEMs like Apple needed them for those. But they were putting them into ultra high exp- high end executive laptops. What's happened is that those ultra CLV chips have finally gotten powerful enough, and the power consumption has stayed down low enough that they're actually usable yeah. now. The battery life is longer than three hours, right? And they're under a thousand dollars, right? And they're under three pounds. Yeah. The same thing's going to happen with ARM as the power increases on ARM in the coming years, yes. and we're going to see another really exciting inflection happen on the mobile, on the phones and tablets at that point as, as well. Yeah. So uh, continuing with successes. Uh, for for 2011. I, oh, and by the way, just as a footnote on the Ultrabooks thing, mm-hmm. I think ultimately, you know, right now we have this thing, this kind of bifurcated system where you've got like Ultrabooks like the MacBook Air and, and the PC Ultrabooks and then the big heavy machines. I think, you know, as, as the technology increases, we're just going to have to get to a point where Ultrabooks are just what we think of as computers. The big, heavy MacBook Pro type computers are just ultimately going to go. They're, La- they're not going to need to not, be that not, heavy you anymore. You mean laptops? Yeah. Sorry. By lap. Yeah. yeah. By laptop. Netbook. Yeah. You know. Uh, what do you, whatever you want to call them. Lap. Laptop. Uh, what's the other? Ne- Notebook. Uh, no computers. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know the idea of like big, heavy. Apart from like the big Alienware type mm-hmm. mega rigs for gaming mm-hmm. and stuff that will probably hang on for a bit longer. Ultimately. You know, I mean, like in a couple of years, the MacBook, like the high-end MacBook Pro, is probably going to have that kind of form factor. Next don't you year? think? Next year. Yeah. Very soon. Yeah. Um, I would say another big success for 2011 is mobile photography. Okay. Photography. Phones. F- phone cams. Phone cams, but not only because phone cams are great with iPhone four. I mean, and even before then with the N nine, but people taking them and actually uploading them. 
and doing right. things with them, whether it was it's Instagram, whether Instagram, it's for rating food, path, you know, uh, whatever, yes, social, Facebook, any kind yeah. of social network photo yes. service. Yeah, it's tremendous. Yeah. Overtaking traditional photography, mobile photography. The, the integration of being able to take a photograph and share it instantly, again, is something we take it for granted, but it is, it's wonderful. Yes. Uh, I've been actually using Instagram quite a bit lately and really enjoying it. Uh, the, the filters, are, I know you hate them, but they, so oftentimes they can make a photograph <sighs> more interesting. It's not, it's, not about, it's not about artificially degrading the photo to make it look like it's an old-fashioned photo. It's just about applying effects that make the photograph look more interesting or make it pop better or more, you know, just somehow more attractive, pleasing on the eye. Nothing I, wrong with I that. couldn't agree with more, nor more on the filters with Instagram. But, but I, 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 think the other, I think the other interesting thing that's come out of this year and in the last couple of weeks is this path thing. We love um, path around here. Yeah. We love I, it. I, I don't know that path is interesting to normal people, though. I'm still trying to figure out what it is about it that makes it unique. Well, there's, it's, I think it's a, a combination of factors. One is that, like you said before, it's the best social network UI on, on a mobile app. The app, I haven't yeah, seen the Android version, but the iOS version is... It's exactly is, the same. Okay. The Android app it's, is exactly it's the same. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yes. It's one of the most beautifully, elegantly designed yeah. apps I've ever seen. And two, it's... Uh, unlike Twitter and Facebook, it's an opportunity to create a new social network of just your close friends. They tell you... Yes, and you that's can't the have thing. 150. Absolutely, yeah. and I think this is what's interesting to me now. Is I think this is the way it's going. At least for me, this is my personal taste. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I had a lot of friends on Facebook for a long time. I tried to pair them back. It's yep. hard to do. It's hard to once you once you friended someone, it's hard to unfriend them. Yep. Yep. Um, Google Plus. I've well, got, no, you just click the button, right? It's not like you, well, yeah, but then but then they, but then they're difficult. sending you messages oh, like, oh, dude, why are you unfriend yeah. me? And yeah. sending you friend requests back again, yes. like they well, know. That's how you unfriend and block. Oh yeah, that's no, even nicer. Don't do that. Yeah. Anyway, and and then with Google Plus, it's I even. Do. I mean, in Twitter, it's more passive. Like, yes, you can follow or friend fewer people, but right. anyone can follow you, subscribe to you. I'm you don't kind necessarily of want that. I, there was a period where I was kind of attracted, seduced by the sheer volume on Google Plus oh. because I've got more than three hundred thousand followers on there because I'm one of the suggested Ooh, users. I'm a quarter on. as popular as Britney Spears. Yes, but the problem is. That volume, the signal to noise ratio is just becomes terrible. Would you like to buy a piece of real estate? In so, Asia? I, exactly. <laughs> I need to. Con- I need to seriously reconsider how I Dick use Google Plus. But the point is, what I like about Path is, I feel like there's now a move from as people are getting sick by like the information overload of like 800 friends that you don't really care about. Yes. Moving to a more intimate network where it's just maybe 20, 30 people of the people that actually you do see every day and you do care about, you do want to look at their photographs yep. or hear what they're doing. It, it's it's why GroupMe was so awesome. Yes. Right. So I think that's going I think Path is actually maybe indicative as we maybe moving into predictions for 2012 of this is what we're going to start to see now is less about volume and how many friends can you have because the more the more people you add the less resonance it has I think and so the, yeah. the Path is a good example of how it's about back to basics just a select group of friends keep it intimate you, you, because it's just very close friends you don't mind sharing more you share more you, you, more you, you, things, you yeah. feel comfortable sharing let's say your location or pictures of yep. things that you might not want everyone else to see Google Plus obviously is kind of technically does this if you want to curate the different circles but it's a hassle There's Path a lot just of says just use this too, and yeah. this is only for your close God, friends imagine if Google Plus had launched as Path what a different world we'd live in Today. We would be living and it could be Plus living in a very different that. world. Google yeah. Plus wants the giant social Yeah, graph. they can't have world domination. But I'm saying that we've all been seduced by this idea of volume in with Facebook and, and other sites like it, is that people just want to add friends all the time. They, 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 oh, how many friends can I get? That you, They're completely missing the point. It's not about how many. It's a, it's about quality, not quantity. Mm-hmm. And part, they think, is it, focused on quality over quantity. In terms of in, the, 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 the quality of your feed and whether or not... I care about when I look at my Facebook. Ninety percent of the stuff is just noise. Like, why is this person even on my fucking feed? Yeah. Patrick Klepek said something. I can't remember. It was something like this idea of like, if you're not someone that I would stop to talk to at a party or whatever, or you would say happy birthday to. Right. Yeah. You're not. If I someone, can't be bothered to post happy birthday to you. Yes. And so for the, I, I've been kind of trimming down my Facebook feed, but again, once you've got them on there, it's hard to get rid of people. Yes. So with Path now, I'm being very careful about not putting people on there that I don't want. Actually, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other thing for this year, music streaming. Now we got Spotify, which launched this year and yeah. already had been yeah. around for a while in yeah. beta. Yeah. Uh, and of course, cloud music with Google Music and all yes. that stuff. Yes. And iTunes Match, I think that was a big thing that for this year. That was a big year. story this and, year, yeah. And I wrote the post up, I love Spotify. It makes, it, uh, yes, the world has had it for a while, but this year it made more sense because even though storage is cheaper, Actually, it's more scarce in certain ways because I'm not holding both a 120 gig MP3 player and a phone. I just have the phone, which may right. be 16 gig or 32 gigs. Right. Most people buying phones right now are perfectly happy with the 16 gig phone. 
they want that space for apps. I have a MacBook Air. You buy an Ultrabook SSD. You don't. It's expensive to get the 256. That's the bigger thing is that physical local storage is going to mean less as yes. more and more stuff is yeah. in these massive. I would rather farms. pay for faster local storage with smaller capacity and have more of the stuff that I, in the cloud because networks are better. I still have unlimited uh, service uh, data, and so Spotify. I'm perfectly happy. Pay ten bucks a month for it. Right. Have you guys hit the, ten, the 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 top five percent thing yet? Though I know you have, Gary. Have you done it What's yet, Norm? Top five percent of what? Percent? Of network users. How how do you know that? I got a text from AT and T saying, "Hey, I, you're in the top five percent of network users. You've not won a prize. We're just going to." Oh no, you I, down. I went over my minutes when I was away on business one time and uh, used my phone a, a ton, but I've never gone over my data cap. I've unlimited data, so. Ah. Uh, well, I have unlimited data too, but they still say if you're in the top five percent, they'll throttle you eventually. Really. Um, I, I hit that using RDO last month in December. Ooh. So um, I, I, I'm thinking I'm actually going to switch to the locker service from the streaming service. I've been using RDO quite happily for the last year. And uh, I think uh, the, thing I've, the thing I've discovered is that I can actually use a combination of Cloud Player and iTunes Match to get Amazon purchases directly on my phone without having to do any kind of real work. Well, there's still more work than just typing a name of a band that you just heard of or someone just told you this is listening true. songs immediately. This is That's true. why they're Spotify free. That's Let's true. With the ads. And audio free too, I think, now. Um, so what do you, think, go what on, do you well. think about Pandora and that kind of stuff? Is that Does that still have a place in the modern world? I, I think Pandora, uh, if they have 100 million users, okay. um, I think users. They, they still had a lot of problems with uh, the royalty fees. And I don't know, because they, they don't work directly with labels like Spotify does. And that's why Pandora yeah. has every song, because they go through the, the uh, DMCA and, and all the uh, the mediaries. Yeah. Uh, they, they are yes. paying a lot more uh, through sound exchange than, they, than Spotify is. But Spotify could sure. be in trouble because uh, their deals will expire. Um, what about Turntable? I was going to say, don't forget, in the world of streaming, this was also the year of Turntable FM, which had a ter- terrific launch. And it was, 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 was a great story this year. And um, and a lot of people still using it. I think there are still it's still a niche I product. haven't, you know, after there was a period there where I was actually the number one DJ on Turntable because yes. I was on it all the time. I was really, yeah. really obsessed with it. And then after a while, like any, you know, fad, you know, I, I started to drift away from it. And I, but I came back and did a Christmas room playing Christmas yeah. music uh, over the holidays. And it's really improved. I mean, as you'd expect, you go away for a long time, you come back. They, they've added a whole bunch of features. It's, it's much like more. Narnia. You yeah. go back to Narnia and it's like, oh, everything's changed. It's it's much more. It's much more <laughs> stable. Um, it's uh, it's in there's great. There's an iPhone it's, app it's, now. Yeah, there's an iPhone app. It's in great shape. They still haven't managed to to get an international rollout because obviously mm-hmm. they're dealing with music licensing and that's always a nightmare. Yep. Uh, but it, it it's it's still great fun. And it's it, it, in 2011, it was my favorite way to discover new music. I bought more, discovered and bought more music and got turned on to more artists and bands through Turntable than I did any other site, any other music service. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, I loved it. Turntable um, FM. Can we talk about Roku for a minute? It's not software, but, but uh, you know, I was really excited about Roku early in the year. And, and, and I, I actually got one for my parents for Christmas and I set it up. And I realized that the YouTube channel's gone away. Mm. I, I, it's still on mine, I think, because I'm grandfathered in, but new users can't get YouTube on that's that interesting. thing. You think that's the, kind of a, a, a pillar of content yeah. that you'd expect it, to have on there? It, it seems like one of the top five. And um, and without it, it is... it is like I think I'm going to actually get them to send it back and send them an Apple TV instead, because with AirPlay yeah. and the fact that they're both iPhone, iPad users... Right. Um, oh, yeah, it's a no-brainer for an Apple TV in that well, case. Well, kind of. I, I was thinking about it. I, I, I'm worried because they don't have... There are, everything's on Wi-Fi there, so I'm worried that they might not have enough uh, bandwidth to do, you know, AirPlay video streaming over Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi and have it look okay. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. It, I don't know if it was just the, they had a pretty big holiday uh, uh, advertising campaign, but it seemed like Roku is starting to uh, break into the mainstream consciousness a little bit more at the oh, end of the year. Huge advertising campaign. And yeah, I know people billboards just, everywhere. Yeah, there's. Uh, it, Love. Well, they were sold out almost every time I went into Best Buy. And Apple has not, it's because, largely because Apple hasn't been pushing, I think intentionally, Apple TV uh, this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Roku Because they the know there's a bigger thing coming. Yes. Right. And, and Roku saw it as a huge opportunity. And Netflix, you know, every, it's in, in the consciousness everywhere. And it's it's attractive price point. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's the only, same thing it, as a Kindle. It's only a 50, 50 bucks. And I think Roku is a great product. I would be nervous about buying into any kind of TV 
app ecosystem right now uh, until Apple yeah. releases what? Because I think that, that they're going to come in with something very interesting. Next so are year. we uh, are we done with a recap of 2011? Let's move to uh, uh, predictions. Yeah. Oh it's my goodness. Really got oh, Gary, I want to take a look at that. I want to oh, yeah, talk, I I gotta talk about that. Oh my god. Okay, so 2011. Great. I'm sure we missed a ton of things, uh, but these are what came to mind uh, for 2011. Of course, post things in the comments. But let's talk about a 2012 right after this. Now you're just mad with power, Chad. I, I love the buttons. Uh, yeah, you should uh, record from home more often. I'm going to put you in charge of the buttons all the time now. Oh, sweet. Uh, so 2012 with CES right around the corner. Uh, we anticipate, obviously, more Android phones, probably a new iPhone, new iPad next year. Uh, do you want to make some bold declarations? Let's go around the circle. Let's make this a game. Okay. And everyone should make one bold declaration. Don't think about it too much because that's the fun of it. And then we should go around several times until, right. and, and we can right. discuss it every right. time. Okay, Start, okay. Chan. So I'll start. iPad 3 with a retina level screen next year, early next year. And I will add on, double down with a, a second skew of the iPad, whether it's bigger now, or smaller. Second whole line eggs? of the iPad. Are you basing this on the stories that, that just started circulating recently about the iPad 3 maybe coming as early as next month? I don't think it's going to be next month. I think it's still going to be quarter one, probably March. I don't think they're going to do anything for Steve's birthday. I think it's stupid. That's dumb. Um, I think it'll be a major iPad 3 revamp with a Retina, Retina A6, quarter resolution, double, low, every, super battery yes. life, all the things you would want it to have, bells and whistles. Super iPad, the one to get, plus sometime also, maybe beginning, maybe end of the year, I don't know when, but a second line of iPads. I don't know how much of a limb you're going out on saying there's going to be an iPad 3 in 2012. Well, we'll start off with the easy predictions. Okay, all right. And if, if no one wants to make the bold ones and when we come around full circle, okay. I will go even further. All right. So Gary, let's go. Oh, uh, oh, so oh, my, oh are we going left? You are technically on. We're, go, we're going counterclockwise. Counter counterclockwise. Gary. Um, well, it, it makes oh. sense because my prediction is actually kind of an extension of yours. I think you're right. I think obviously I think we are going to see a Retina very high end premium iPad three, mm -hmm. and I think you you're right. The, they'll, it'll become a two tiered yes. system like the iPhone is. There'll be a premium one, and there'll be a, a, a cheaper way in. This is a boring projection because uh, because, okay, okay, because your Apple. Prediction, then. Because I'm going to talk all over yours, Bob. Because <laughs> Apple needs to protect that low end of the market. Because that's where that's where they're going to start getting attacked from now with yep. Amazon Kindle and this other stuff that's happening. Uh, but my real prediction, which is an extension of this, is that I think 2012 is the year that w the that we'll start to see Apple no longer having a stranglehold on that market. It just they, they it, it can't continue whether it be Amazon or Google, someone has to come in with a, with a real viable iPad competitor. This, this cannot you know continue. Be more specific. Say, every other, every other company 8. is being grossly say negligent. It. I think Windows 8 is one way it could happen. Say by next holiday, the iPad will have the gap between the uh, Apple share on the tablet market and everyone else will not be as wide as it is this year. I mean, what, I mean, what's what's the non-Apple market share on in the tablet space right now? Like five percent or something. I th I think by the end of the year you could see like maybe up to twenty five percent. Okay. Uh, but but the majority of that will be one player. That will be either a, a Google tablet or Amazon, whatever Amazon Kindle Fire or Two. Microsoft. Or Microsoft Windows 8, someone will have like 20% of the market and start to make some inroads because it's ridiculous. This cannot go on year after year. I, look, look, you know, I love Apple. I think the, the iPad's a fantastic product, yeah. but it's boring. We need yeah. we need competition in this space, and Apple has had it, this whole marketplace. Fair play, invented the marketplace. Now, but it's had it to itself for too long. I will disagree with you when you say that Apple is going to release a cheaper tablet because they want to protect that lower end. I don't think Apple cares about. Uh, market th thinks about. But doesn't that just follow that the iPhone model? What the lower end now? is the iPod Touch, guys. But I don't think Apple thinks of it that way. I think they do for iPhone because the subsidies keep the iPhone prices high for them in their books. I don't think that, and because there's no subsidy on the iPad, I don't think they're going to do a two hundred dollar iPad and make no margin on that. They make project, they sell products to make high margin. I don't think it'll necessarily be that that cheap, but I think it will be. I think once the iPad three comes out, I think the iPad two will stick around mm -hmm. at a lower price point, maybe like two ninety nine entry, something like okay. that. But I think the, they'll keep the margins high. Okay, well. Uh, I think a Retina display for iPad three. No, no, no! Whatever, don't, don't, don't stack on. Make, yeah. Make what's a, your prediction? Oh, declaration. Okay, I think one of the major Android providers will drop their shitty custom front end. Samsung, Motorola, LG, uh, sorry, HTC, and we'll run stock. That's we'll boring. Stock. That's a boring no, prediction. I think it's a bold prediction. They've okay. invested an incredible amount of money in these yes. retarded UIs. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 
and and they're gonna they gotta drop him. Okay, well, somebody's gonna drop it. That, I think that is a very bold declaration. Why why would they do that? Because they want to provide a better experience to their users. Yeah, but aren't they more interested in having control over the experience and making it better? Yeah, I'm very skeptical. I don't think HTC. Yeah, I, I, I disagree. I don't with think this. I, don't, is gonna, I, I don't I, think Touch is going away. Yeah, it's all, that's all going to be here. In fact, yeah. it's, in fact, I'm going to go the opposite way and say it's going to be worse. Oh no! I'm going to say they're going to double down on this bullshit. <laughs> Uh, my prediction, Windows 8 will be great on tablets, and we're going to see really awesome quad-core ARM Windows 8 tablets, but Windows 8 will fail on desktop. I think Windows 8 next, okay. this is next holiday. I, I think it'll be, uh, of course, the next holiday. I think it will fail utterly on desktop, and everyone's going to stick with Windows 7. Most people. But wait, w wouldn't that be the first Windows ever to have failed on, des on desktop? That is a crazy prediction. I think it will be a Vista level. Menu? I, 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 think mean, unless, I mean, Vista okay, was let me shit, let me and they still let managed let me to get through Let me qualify this. As long as... Unless they make drastic changes to the way they're designing, redesigning the start menu and start button and the way shortcuts are happening, which they may announce at CES, unless that happens, the way Windows is right now with developer beta and their, you know, as, as much as they can explain on their blogs. The I Metro think, start screen is what you're talking I, yes, about. Yeah, yes. I think that it's going to fail on the desktop. I don't think that's bold at all. And I think as a product, Windows 8 on desktop is going to fail. I think okay. if they launch with the Metro start screen, they might as well just call it Vista 2. Okay. I've got a big one. Okay. okay. I think 2012 is going to be the breakthrough year for um, a la carte internet TV. Be very specific. I think, we're, I think, I, I think we're finally going to see really viable options through, through things like Xbox Live. Uh, and PlayStation and Apple TV. Again, Apple TV is going to be get, the, is the big dark horse right here. Mm -hmm. Is that I think we're going to get... We may not be completely free of paying some kind of cable subscription bill or whatever, but I think cu customers are going to have more options. I think we are going to get closer to that. Hold on. That idea. Are, oh, I'm not finished yet. I, I, well, well, I, I, I'm going to get to the specifics if you'll just okay. fucking let me. <laughs> the, I think we're going to get to... The, I, I think that uh, Xbox and Apple TV and these other providers are going to finally enable us to stop paying for these massive bundles of TV channels that we don't want and start creating our own a la carte selections of, well, I, okay, I can get 20 channels. Here are the 20 channels I want, and I'm going to pay for those 20 channels and not any other shit. I think th I think we're going to start to see that really come into play in 2012. Okay, we'll and double do down on that. you think you'll be able to get all of the 20 channels? What's that? Do you, think you will, do you think you'll be able to pick from any of the channels that are available today, or do you think you'll have a subset of channels that are available? I mean, I, I, ideally, I would like to be shown a thousand channels, and I can pick any 20. But they'll be like, right. you can pick five from this part, four from this part, and two from the premium part, or something yeah. like that. Right. It'll, they'll, that they'll, still, they'll still be all kinds of crazy sure. restrictions. Yeah. But I do think that we'll be, I, I do think that through things like the whatever the next Apple TV is, mm. and Xbox Live, because Xbox Live is already providing some great, the, the, the thin end of the wedge right now what we're seeing with xbox live with like ms msnbc tmz sci-fi channel uh verizon fire so all coming through that system now i think we are we're going to have much more control over what tv comes so into our house and be, how we watch it'll it. be the a la carte model but it'll be more panda express than pf chang's well but you hate both don't I you do hate both okay I think it's shit well one's mind. more expensive <laughs> yeah okay. exactly all right <laughs> Um, yes, uh, I think I think that's right. Okay, I, know what's weird. I went to I went to when I went to the mall to get yeah. Leah's Lego. Uh -huh. There's a huge food court at that mall. Yes, and there were all kinds of crazy food, interesting yep. stuff. The line for Panda Express Fuck is mad. It's the longest line there by far. No, there's a whole other places. Cool Korean food. There's a Thai place over the there. There's a cool Indian place. People. No one's there. There's a fucking 500 long people person line for Panda Express. Everyone loves orange chicken. Don't orange get me wrong. I, don't get me wrong. I, I don't have a problem with Panda orange. Express. I've eaten there many times. Oh I just don't understand why Damn people it. are so crazy for it. Ugh, if you said to me, hey, do, I've got an opportunity to go in on a Panda Express franchise, I couldn't write the check quickly enough. <laughs> Because it's, it's clearly a license to print money. <laughs> we should do it. Let's get a Panda Express franchise. I would kill myself. <laughs> Norm, Norm, would, Norm would hate that money so much. Do you feel like you'd just be a, a traitor to your, to yes. your ethnicity or something? Oh, you'd be a traitor to my, personal, my taste buds. But it's not bad. That it chicken's pretty good. It's fucking terrible. That firecracker chicken. It's not good, dude. Right. Oh, Panda Express God. is never the answer. Okay, uh, well, you guys are you, fucking so elitist. Well, you're, we, you're not men of the people I, like me. I like this game. Let's, let's okay, continue. well, what's your prediction? Oh, man. Come on. Make bold predictions. I I think... I think that Windows Phone 7 market share will grow in 2012. Oh, for fuck's lame. sake. Oh You're not even God. trying. Let's go okay, okay. Put, those, put those Lady Gaga get... glasses back on. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they, they, they suit what's coming out of your mouth much um, better. It's nonsense. Well, uh, you talked for so fucking long, I forgot what I was going to say. Well, I could have got it done much quicker if you hadn't kept fucking interrupting. Uh, I said one uh, we're thing. We're skipping well. Okay, I think next year, <laughs> Apple. Skip I'm well. skipping. Let me play the Uno card. We yeah. can just skip over it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll reverse. Do a reverse. Just constantly leave him out. Oh, yeah, let's do fuck that. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Apple will, will sell a physical Apple branded TV next year. Oh, oh so you're sticking with it. yes. It's Hold interesting. On. You're sticking with it's actually going to be like a some kind of panel. Yep. Because I'm I'm now coming off that and starting nope. to think it's going to be just a, 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 a more interesting I'm version of the, of the hockey. Part. Putting an egg on it. Uh, Apple will sell a TV are, next year. Are, in addition, crack. In addition, this is the biggest. Crack. This is the boldest prediction yet. In addition the to boldest. a revamped. Apple TV set-top box. Will, what's your reaction? I think that Norm is smoking crack. I do. I'm starting to come come to that as well. I think that, hold on, hold on. This I is the time for bold decisions. Right. Norm is 100% correct that they are going to sell a revamped Apple TV box. I can tell you what it's going to be. It's A5 dual-core CPU, or you 16 gigs of memory, of, of storage, and 512 megs of memory, and it might run some apps. In, in in the Gary Winna school of you'll be able to get a la carte TV. Siri? Norm, Norm is gonna be eating a dozen eggs by the end of this was the dumbassery. Well he's got he's got he's got retina display iPad two. Three, That's not gonna happen. Three. He's no, he's retina display three. iPad three is what he said. Ret retina display iPad three, sorry. He's got well, but, 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 That's gonna happen though. That's <laughs> crazy. That's not, no the retina display iPad 2 is going to happen. I really uh, hope the readers make us a forum post and, and we can have checkboxes. Let's continue. Uh, Gary? Um, well, I'm going to make the... I'm, first of all, I'm just going to make the counter prediction. So okay. I, I'm actually starting to think that you're wrong. I, I, I was very big on the idea of Apple making well, a TV yeah. screen. Is, I don't think that's going to happen. counter predictions and I'm not. You can make counter predictions. I tried to make it and I got shouted down. Wait till your turn. I, I, I agree with you. I think I think the, the, the enhanced Apple TV box is coming. I think it's going to have a lot more. The, here's the key. I think it, well, th this part's not the key, but I think it will also have Siri because that's Apple's going to want to roll that out. The iPad 3 will also have Siri. They're going to yeah. start rolling that out. Um, but the, the big thing is going to be whatever is going behind the scenes with the content deals that, that Apple is making. <laughs> I think... Uh, this is the key because Apple can create an amazing box, but they can't create the content. And so, you know, beyond Disney, which they do have some control over, I think that they're behind the scenes right now doing, making the same kind of moves they made with the music industry saying, look, you've got to get on this train or it's going to fucking roll over you. You need to be working with us. This is going to be the solution. Does Apple make these have deals. a relationship with Disney? I thought Jobs just had a relationship <laughs> with Disney. He's dead. Yeah, Apple sells a relationship with Disney. Yeah, I think Apple okay. still has a relationship with Disney. And I think that um, that that's going to be the compelling... The content is... The, the the quality of whatever fucking flat panel display they may or may not make is not going to is not gonna be the issue. The issue is going to be, what can you get, What can I watch on this box? And that's that's going to be the difference. Agreed, but I think they'll still release a TV. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want to make a... Do you prediction? really imagine that people are going to be walking out of Apple stores with like big 55-inch mega TV boxes? Oh, 37-inch. Oh, you, you don't think it's going to be big, no. like big mega sizes? Okay, well, that, that's me out right away. Um, I bet that there's no optical bedroom. discs on any computer. Bedroom. I don't, but again, the, the, the panel is only so, I mean, we know that Apple can make great panels, but the panel is the big unwieldy part that's not that interesting. Gosh. The part is the little box that delivers the content, the part that you can just take out with a little, in a carrier bag. You would say, you could say the same thing about iPads and, or iPhones, iOS and the retina screen on the iPhone. Who knows? Maybe Apple has a deal for 4K TVs. I'll make I'll make a contingent uh, contingent uh, guess. Okay. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna hedge my bet about no flat panel Apple TV. Oh, and even Will's retreating. Okay. No, no, no. I'm gonna say if they do it, it'll the app the the guts that run the apps and have the processor will be removable. Perhaps like that slot patent where you could have the tablet nope. that came in and out of the side of the iMac. I'm already gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna use one of my predictions to counter it, but I will say absolutely not. Not removable, but okay. Uh, I, I good, also, good hedge. I also, good hedge. Well, I also think that you're going to be. My big prediction is that Norm is going to be eating many eggs. I could turn. I could turn around. And start loving hard boiled eggs this year. That would be a good turnaround. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna cook. When I cook these hard boiled eggs for you, I'm gonna overcook them so they're all sulfurous oh, and God green. Damn, it, I hate those. Uh, I'm gonna go make more bold predictions. Um, I think uh, bold MacBook. Or dumb. What I'm hearing is dumb, not bold. No. <laughs> This is a feisty. Will is kind of feisty. I'm you're feisty in here. I feel like I'm. I'm, I'm Will, ah! Will, yeah, Will is like internet guys. Like you're a big man on the other side of that monitor, talking tough when you're all, when you're all the way over there. I see you say that to my face, yeah. motherfucker. 
Um, I think uh, MacBook MacBook Pros without optical drives in the MacBook Air yes. design. Yes, no, that, 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 that's an easy one, but I agree with you. I think that optical drives in all Apple laptops will be dead this year. Yep. Ma- next MacBook Pro will not have that. All Apple computers will be gone this okay, year. Okay, that can be your prediction. Uh, uh, Gary, do you want to make a prediction about the Wii U? I think. Oh, hold on. Just, just. I, I don't think that next iMac will go. Get, will do away with the with the with the optical drive completely because it's still useful on desktops. Uh, it's it such. It, it's such a cheap part. It doesn't. Yeah. It, the weight is not an issue because it's sitting on a desk. I don't. That will be the last to go. Yeah. Apple doesn't want people buying discs. They want people buying things from the Mac App Store and iTunes. No, no. Uh, Great, but I think they were to ease people out. It's just like why Mac Pros they still sell Mac. Yeah, Pros. it's it's going to be a staggered thing. They'll go yeah. they'll, they'll they'll go next from the MacBook Pros. Yeah. Um, the next round the next ra- round of MacBook Pros will not have an optical drive. I think the next iMacs will, but th- that will be the last one. Yes. Then then they'll be gone on yep. the next round after that in 2013. Wii U. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to quick quick uh, you know bullet points gaming predictions. Yes. I think Wii U is going to be interesting and do okay. I think it's going to do better than the Wii did. Um, what better than the Wii? Well, better in the long term because right now the the Wii after oh, an man, incredibly powerful eggs this year. Well, we we had we had an incredible sales story out of the gate the first couple of years, but yeah. now it's a joke. So you now think the Wii, Wii is a joke. U is going to be more consistent. Maybe not have incredible sales story out the gate, but over the long run, I think I think the problem is that Nintendo in the last few years with with the Wii and with the with the DS and the 3DS has really doubled and tripled down on control gimmicks. Yeah. Uh, not just control gimmicks, but there's always something gimmick that makes their games unique to... You can't get those, those those games on any other experience. Obviously, PS Move and Kinect, they tried to do their own versions of those, but the, but Nintendo pioneered it. The problem was, it was very difficult for third-party developers to get to grips with making games around a whole new control mechanism, which is why we saw so much shit and so much you know novelty shovelware. And I think mm-hmm. that's going to be a problem on the Wii U as well. Um, but I'm... I, I, I don't really know what's going to happen with Wii U, but I'm optimistic. I want it to succeed, it's, so it's, I'm going to predict Like Windows it Phone 7, it's very nebulous, its future. Yeah, and we'll know Chris more. I think we'll, we'll know more very soon. Uh, you will definitely see the next generation Xbox next year. Hey, that's two. What? You did two. Let's I'm, I'm doing a quick round of gaming. Okay. Gaming, gaming, gaming is like I'm just bundling it all in. Yeah. Uh, next Xbox, you'll see it at E3. Not released next year, but announced. And it may and be released for the holiday. But I don't it, think. But it will definitely. But you will definitely. The big story of E3 2012 will be the next generation Xbox. I think if you look at uh, for launch games and what big games that came out this year, so many three core games came yeah. out this year and coming yeah. out early next year. Yeah. I think the next round of those games yeah. will launch on both 360 and right. the next Xbox, and so it'll have to be two years. And out. the next generation Xbox. Uh, will be backward compatible with the old Connect. I think there will also be a more high, yes. a highly calibrated, I better, believe that. better Connect. Yes, and I'm willing to believe that the next Xbox, the default SKU, will have yes. some, will have some kind of Connect in it. Yeah. Like you won't be able to get it without it. You, you think about Connect? That was the thing I could not have called. I mean, after actually using it and being unimpressed, it was not. It was no Hello Batman, right? That we all thought it would be, it, you know. And still, right now, even with integration with the dashboard, it's slow. The and, jury is still and, out on Connect, so they, they've had a tremendous sales story it, as well. But already, sale. I feel like the shine is coming off a little bit. You, Amazon, with their announcement of their Kindles, they also announced the best-selling titles from each, or best-selling products in each product category. Yeah. For games, number one selling game. Yeah. Dance Call three. Of Duty. No. The dance really? dance game, the third one. Just Dance three. Just, Just dance? dance three. Okay. Yep. Um, but, 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 but that's incredibly popular across all SKUs. Yeah. Like the Wii version is very true. popular. Okay. I don't, I don't yeah. think that's necessarily a, a booster. For, if you just said Dance Central, that's one thing. Sure. Um, but I, I do think that Microsoft's going to clearly double down on Connect in 2012. I think that it, it won't actually be built into the machine because that's obviously you need to be able to put it wherever you, you can put it. But I I think there's a very good chance that you that the next generation Xbox, the Connect is just going to be right there in the box because they need they need that's the best way to leverage is it. Everyone who buys it has it by default, and then it's easier to get developers on board to to build games yes. for it. Yes. Uh, let's let's cover Can I do a prediction for games. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes, you may. I predict that we see next generation Xbox in spring of 2013, uh, an announcement at a fall event, not at uh, E3. All right. Do you want to have a cash bet on this, Will? No. Okay. I also <laughs> predict everything else Gary predicted because it's bullshit. I have to go last. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you you are too tired to come. What? What? Up, what, what guys, I've been up since one o'clock. <laughs> no, but Will, what, what else? I'm you, tired. What else, what else are you? What else are you agreeing with then? The bundle connect and stuff like that, or what? I think the bundle connect is an issue, and the the high res connect is a no brainer. Um, I think that they're probably going to crack down on all the bullshit bundles that happened last generation. Yeah, I'd love to see that bundle fucks. Hate those. I, yeah, I, I think that's I think that's gonna happen. I think it's the last generation with optical media. 
I think they have to have that because they need it in Best Buy and that kind of stuff. I, I think that we see a um, a substantial shift toward online purchasing uh, toward the end of this generation. Well, so you know, when are we, when are we going to see how many generations are away from a uh, video game console without a without an optical drive? That's further out. I don't think that's the next one. I think it's one after that. Maybe the one after. Yeah. I think that's when the hardware doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah, and then and cloud stuff for a lot of services. Uh, yeah. So. I, by people. the way, so I, I actually I agree with Will on like a like an early uh, like Q two twenty thirteen for the launch of it. Yeah. Where I differ is he thinks it's going to be announced later in the year. I think it'll be. I think it's going to be, be the E3. story of E three. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 I think. I think with the sales that they have on the three sixty now, they delay that announcement as long as possible because they want people to keep. That's buying. actually interesting. Is that the, the three sixty is holding up incredibly yeah. well? Yeah, I mean, the sales on that thing five six years later are yeah. just ridiculous. I know. Um, so let's make sure we cover our bases. I mean, a lot of people call us an Apple-centric podcast, which we occasionally are guilty of. <laughs> there, so may we, be some, <laughs> there may, may be some validity to that. <laughs> so we definitely made our Apple predictions. We've covered Microsoft to some extent in yeah. terms of Windows 8 and Xbox. Uh, the other big players, Facebook, big predictions on oh, that. Oh, but let's talk about Vita for a sec. Okay. Vita's oh, so what, no, I, I was going to get there, there anyway. I was skipping over. Yeah. Well, let's finish with the gaming stuff. Okay. Sony, let's take Sony predictions. Well, the, I mean, Venus tanked, got done poorly after the first week in Japan. Right? Had a very strong first week in Japan. Now Anyways. it's like, th th that may be supply constraints. We don't know yet. I think Vita will be uh, as successful as the 3DS. In the but the, like the, th the 3DS massively outsold it in this, yeah. in this last week. So that's not good. Um, my big bold prediction is that it's going to be a dud. I think a year from now, we're going to be talking about how it was a failure. Wow. Okay. That's, that's pretty bold. Yeah. Uh, anything else Sony related? Uh, I, 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 I think that Gary is a little bit harsh. I think that it will uh, do the exact same. I think it'll track the same as PSP. Okay. Okay. So not a success, but not a dud. No, yeah. I mean, it kind of stuck around. No. Again, you got to remember Sony will double down on this stuff like crazy. Yeah. But did you they're see that? Story? Did you, hall, did you see that. that story that I posted? I think it was in Forbes. No. About how much money they're losing, and how the only the only part of Sony that makes money is their insurance division. It makes more money than every other part of Sony combined. Yeah, more than their, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it, Sony's a pretty sad story Sir these Howard. days. God, on like a corporate yes. level, from everything from Huge TVs success. to everything, they are just a, just a, a just a broken company. I think we knew see a new 3ds toward the end of next year. Time for holiday. Okay, that's a good prediction. Um, Sony, our base is covered. Let's talk about the big tech companies. Uh, Amazon and Facebook are the other, and Google, mm -hmm. obviously. So let's go in uh, in that order. Amazon, uh, new Kindle tablet. A new, a new Kindle you'll, tablet. You'll definitely see, you'll definitely see a revised Kindle, yes. which will be mu which will be a lot better, which will yeah. address all the issues from the mm -hmm. last one. Yep. Uh, Prime is going to get more compelling. I think Prime is Prime gonna be, is fantastic. Uh, it's already fantastic now, and it, 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 they've been pushing the streaming stuff. I think next year is going to be Prime is going to rise like Netflix did. Uh, in terms of just as a service that you know everyone just buys yep. to, and takes for granted and yep. it's, you just factor it into your budget. But the difference um, is instead of being, well, I guess it's about the same price. Yeah, it's, it's a little 70 bit bucks and you get more and I think uh, Prime is what Netflix should be scared of. Well, I really wanted to say the thing that I thought was so interesting and I, I was bummed they didn't do it. I hope that they'll may, maybe find a way to do it with Fire 2 or whatever is is bring is when you buy the Fire, you get the Prime membership bundled in with it. Now, they, I, I think they didn't want to do that this year because they wanted to have the launch price be 200 and not 250 Right, but what I'm saying is but I think, that, I think now model, they'll, they'll, yes. they'll evolve yes. that into the deal. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's pretty easy uh, predictions for Amazon. I don't know if they'll, I mean, Kindle will continue to be a success. Um, I mean, I the, 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 the Kindle family, I mean, obviously the fire still needs to kind of find its feet, but the yeah. Kindle family now, yeah. they've honed that down yes. to, 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 to like a fucking razor edge. It's there's such not much a place, high, highly evolved product not, line. But I think also it's a very mature product line and there's not many places it can go. It's kind of where the iPod was maybe two years ago. Well, I think where they need I think where they need to go is evolving the business model a little bit where I can buy their physical book and get the yes. Kindle version. So they need to start working on those kind of deals. Sure. We've been talking about that for a while. So Facebook, I, what the I fuck are you doing Amazon, over there? I think, there? Amazon, I think Amazon starts selling pharmaceuticals I think there's an Amazon drugstore. Do they not do that already? Yes, yeah, I'm surprised. Are you talking about like prescription drugs? Like prescription drugs. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Sure. Like off-brand Viagra and shit not, like that? Not, not terribly I, not off-brand. Costco. I don't, I don't think they're Costco. selling dick pills, Gary. I think they're, uh, you know, selling drugs. Oh. Um, uh, Facebook. I don't think there'll be a Facebook phone next year. I think there's more, already been a Facebook phone. I know. Who cared? Yeah, the, 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 the status. I think there's more more likely that Facebook would uh, enter the tablet market than the, the phone market. Seriously, next year. You Siri. I think that 2012 is the year of you Siri. Oh, God damn it. Um, 
I, I, Any last predictions? We're up against it here. Um, I think I think Google Plus is going to continue to flounder. I think it's going to be a while before they figure out exactly what that thing is. Yeah. You know, I, I um, heard no one got cash bonuses this year. Uh, my uh, Facebook will have a redesign and everyone will complain about it. <laughs> These are easier ones. Yeah. So this is getting easy now. Um, just kind of history Colla- repeating collapse itself. of Twitter some sort of privacy, uh, privacy Tw- Twitter will continue to grow and grow okay uh, and, and my worry is that it will become more corporate that the, the big corporations and companies will find ways to kind of yeah. uh, you know incorporate featured tweets promoted tweets bullshit like I, that you know I, I don't think 2K 4K TVs will hit big next year I think it, we're still I don't think we're ready for that, that yet uh, and I th- and I think and I think we'll start to see I, I we're already starting to see the grassroots of this I think we're going to start to see a serious decline in 3D yes uh, next year I don't care how much the industry pushes it people do not want it in the current incarnation it's yes. not good I enough. think it's more about con- the, the big revolution is it going to be apps it's going to be content yeah uh, which is tough because TV manufacturers mostly are hardware manufacturers not content providers um, so there's not a lot of I, re- hold on I think that Twitter is actually going to fuck up the way they their 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 social network works I think that uh, what's going to happen is they're going to change the interactions to be more like Google Plus where you have uh, uh, post spawning conversations almost like a giant forum I think that's going to run off a lot of the old school hardliners like Gruber who's complaining about the new Twitter I think the new Twitter is actually really good for people especially people like us who have a medium number of followers, not you know two, three million, whatever, like like uh, internet superstars and real celebrities. Um, but I, I think that it's going to allow us to amplify a lot better if we have engaged audiences. I trust the rumors about Twitter being a mess internally. True, uh, they had a runaway success. I didn't know what to do with it, and they're just doing everything they can to hold on to that. Everybody's always trying to take down the thing that they don't get. Um, my last prediction is that a bunch of shit will happen that none of us see coming. Uh, and like just completely random stuff, like, amazing stuff happened that we could never guess in a million years. Loop back around, Netflix starts Apple, selling groceries. Uh, LTE on next iPhone. I'm, That's I'm, a given. I'm, That's I'm, a lock. Yeah, they've, they've got to have it. Put, they can't. Uh, they can't I'll, go another I'll year double, without it. Double eggs on that one. Yeah, no problem. Um, and Fiber in San Francisco next year. I, I think, think that, that three. I think we should set a, a calendar event right now. Three hundred sixty-five years days from today, we should play back this segment and see how we all do. Oh yeah. God. Someone needs and to have the eggs and... all ready. Oh. <laughs> have them all set up. <laughs> That'd be a great picture. Yeah. Uh, and also, I predict I, for 2012, uh, Octobercast 2 will be fantastic. I, You know, my prediction for 2012 is Octobercast 2 and Octobercast 3. Oh, you still want to do a double? I, I, think, I think there would be I, nothing funnier than doing a thing called Octobercast in April. I, th- I, think we, I think what we need to do is come up with a name I'm that's appropriate for the month. I know. It. Oh, my God. I don't want to hear about Sleepy from you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, also, if we do an April October cast, I'll, I'll give hours to Jeff Green as long as he'll sit in the chair. Oh, Joe! I mean, that yeah. was the first thing we yeah. decided that Jeff has to come back for much longer. I yeah. mean, I think he should be like a regular. He should be a fourth chair. Yeah, J- Jeff Why not? and and um and the guys from uh, Resident Three, Tex Hill. If only, if only yeah. all, the, all, all, the, all the guests, all yeah. the guests will come back, and we'll have an even greater, more interesting guests as well. And we'll raise even more money this year. Yes. Yeah. Pa- pa- that, that, Patrick and, good... and Robbie and all the guys that came. It was a good. Oh yeah, they were they were people. terrific. And I will want to kill myself by hour eighteen, hour nineteen, just like last time. And, and, and at hour twelve, you'll once again say, you know, don't you think? Wouldn't wouldn't twelve hours have been enough? Wouldn't that have been good enough? Yeah, exactly. Good exactly. enough. Um, All right, so I think that was oh, that's that's good. a year in review and a year looking forward. This uh, is very boisterous. I can't tell if it's because you as a host are a bit more kind of wild and woolly, or because it, it, it will being kind of in max head remote is kind of thrown off the thing but like this was all over it's, i mean oh it's good it's, but it's wonderful still. norm didn't play the inception noise why do you we miss the best part of that? driving no. so driving the show you haven't done it yet it's we, like it's a i think uh that's because norm knows when a joke is yeah, played out exactly unlike yeah. some people i could mention <laughs> i think i think the reason this podcast is good is because we can see will and we can see him get really frantic the arms flailing basically when he wants to talk yeah it's so easy just to shut him up uh, yeah, well, thank you for joining us for a pretty wonderful 2011. We have a lot more great things in store for you. Oh, by the way, I just got a direct message from a friend of mine who said uh, $10 if you turn the conversation to squirrels. So I'd just like to say, I think squirrels, Norm, what do you think about squirrels? Oh, squirrels are wonderful. They're wonderful. Oh, right. yeah. It's the easiest 10 bucks I've ever made. Wonderful. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, for hey, ears two, two and tails things. and everything. Two things. We have, we have memberships on sale, right? Are they yes. still on sale? They are still on sale. If you're on our podcast page right now watching, you can uh, pick up a membership on sale. I think $35 or several hundred click Patrick. left. Yeah, yeah, click Patrick. Make him, make him do things. Um, if you haven't been checking out Giant Bombs Game of the Year uh, features, they're hilarious and awesome. Um, they're truly a delight to watch. 
uh, the, the recaps that are going on all this week. Uh, we will be at CES in a, a week. Very, I mean, almost, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, a little January over a week. January 8th, right? We leave? Yes, the 8th. Well, uh, 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 Van, Dan Van will be it's heading not, we're down. We're not calling it the Dan Van this year. We have a new name. Oh, we have a new name. See. Okay, it will be unveiled. Uh, Drive Stream will be streaming um, all that Sunday as we drive down to CES. Oh, coverage my God. every night total that coverage. week. Total coverage um, and a live show every night. So yeah. join us for that. Yeah, sure. Sure to have interesting guests and uh, uh, lots well, of blackjack to be played and uh, yes. lots of interesting food to be eaten. Oh, more stories uh, to be told. Yeah. I, I, I hate that we're running out of time. Week. Yeah. But uh, we really have to go. We've we other, are coming uh, up against it. Yes. Oh, hard wall. Um, so thank you again uh, for listening. Happy and New Year, guys. Happy New yes, Year. Yes, Happy New Year to happy everyone. Holidays. We'll be back in the new year, right? So we'll do, what, one more podcast before CES? I think, yeah. I think so. The first week in January. That, that will be episode 99. Oh, and our our 100th podcast. will be the first live show. We'll be at CES. Wow. It's got to be how something special. How very fitting. Yeah. Well, it's, it's bound to be something Oh, special. my God. S- start putting suggestions in the forums right now for what you'd like to see on the 100th episode. Spectacular. Will will not sing, but he'll do just about anything I else. promise I won't sing. Probably. I'm open to it. Merry Christmas, guys. Happy Merry New Christmas. Year. I'm Merry gonna, Christmas. Merry Christmas and a with, happy uh, new year. Play us out with uh, an audio cue, but the, uh, we won't we won't do fake outtakes. No fake outtakes. I we'll apologize for that. Um, we'll this whole thing was fake outtakes. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next year. Bye, guys. Hi there. I didn't see you. Oh, oh Ooh, I'm like being a ninja, and this game is for me because it's called Fruit Ninja. All right, uh, we are stopped. We are stopped recording, and see you guys on the stream. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna stop the stream right now. Goodbye.